impact on his gameplay. But Berto is keeping up that pressure really nicely, taking off another chunk of Head's HQ, bringing him down to 10 HP. It's a lot of pressure. Uh, miracle, it seems, you know, you got, uh, at one point, were able to trade with the Whirlwind and the Greyhound to get on into the front line against, I believe it was his own Whirlwind that ended up giving you two bodies.
that's going to be it. There's no draw for Vinny. The death effects of those two Mito regiments are going to finish it off. <laughs> and he knows oh, it. Wow. And J King 3 0s Vinny to get himself into the grand finals of the Cards 2022 World Championship. The chance to defend his world title is real. It is there after being dropped down into the loser's bracket by his great friend, Berto Burrito. So my name's James, I'm from Canada, and I got into cards. Um, it's a pretty interesting story. I was actually traveling uh, for a cousin's wedding, and I was basically just gonna be waiting in a hotel room for the entire day, and the only thing I had was a laptop that was about eight years old and couldn't run any of the games that I was playing at the time. So I opened up Steam, searched up free to play, um, and saw cards, the World War II card game. And I'm a his bit of a history buff. I, so I thought the idea of a World War II themed card game would be pretty interesting. It's not enough. Uh... Red Devils finding, finding oh huge success. God. And that is it. Oh my God, darkness. <sighs> what were we just seeing here? We. Th Berto, the apprentice, has beaten the master. That was huge by Berto. My name is Robert. I'm from Canada. I got into cards when uh, my friend J King, uh, I don't usually call him J King, but <laughs> my friend James told me about this card game and uh, we had played other card games together like uh, Hearthstone before. Did some draft on and off for about a year. You can play all the Blitz tanks that you want. You're not gonna find seven damage. Oh no. Secret Ops paying out here. Secret oh. Operatives, that's gonna be enough. There we go, Kobasnik surrenders and Bamboo is our third player in the top four of the cards 2022 world championship only one spot remains congratulations to bamboo redemption is yours after the mistakes earlier bamboo i'm a uh, player from taiwan it's probably probably the first player from taiwan who's coming into a stage i guess and um i started cars at during covid because it was just a little bit too boring to to find something to play and I figure out oh this game comes with um, some theme that I probably like to play it's like oh World War II theme and it's a card game I'd like to try I haven't played Hearthstone or something you know similar so for me it's totally new I, I spend a lot of time learning this kind of game how to play how to you know build up your decks a lot of thing so it's been about mm, two and a half years and i still treat myself as a casual player so it's pretty fascinating that oh i finally make it here right now this year he's risking it and a kv no bombing raid that's so enough head Oh, he pulled out one order he needed and turned normally, the match around again. Normally, you don't want to see an order yeah. after you played Faint Retreat, but yeah. Head does it. Oh, my God. What was that match? I'm not even sure. I think I have to, to go into myself here and just think about what just happened. Hi. Hello, everyone. I am Head. I'm from Hong Kong, China. Hello everyone, my name is Head, I am from Hong Kong, China. I've been playing cards for 11 months now. I got into the game when I was watching YouTube, I saw the ads for cards, and it caught my attention. As for deck archetypes, I like to play all kinds of decks. As for my favorite, since I do play a lot of games, I'm more inclined to play decks without too much thinking. Decks that are more fast-paced and aggressive. I, I know this, my favorite type of deck is pretty unpopular with other players, but my favorite type of deck is really just a grinding down fatigue type of deck where you just have an answer to every single card or combo your opponent plays throughout the entire game. And after the entire game has played out, your opponent is out of cards 
and you still have just enough left over to win. Proactive win conditions, they're fun. They can certainly be fun, um, whether that's just an aggro deck or a big finishing combo um, or an OTK deck. Those can all be fun, but my favorite type of deck does not have any proactive win condition. It's just your opponent is done. They have done everything they can and it's over. Probably not something traditional as classified. Maybe, maybe let's say arrow or, or control deck. I would say uh, I'd love to play something uh, which has a different logic with other decks. So you can see uh, I bring some mobilize or, or, or some decks that probably other players will not not going to bring into any any broadcast stage so i just love to play with something new and i try a lot of new thing a, a lot of probably not that good not that meta thing on ladder which drag my win rate down by a lot i would say a tempo deck with combo elements. So what I mean by that is decks like uh, Counter Offensive. Uh, that was really when I sort of broke onto the competitive scene. Um, and I also really enjoyed that style of deck. Um, and then there was Bolster after it. And um, the sort of new incarnation in my mind is Self Damage and so many possibilities on every turn. Well, uh, last year I was in uh, about top 32 or top 16 or something. Yeah, I got knocked out after one or two wins after after handling the second stage. So for this year, I didn't expect that much. Uh, at the beginning, I was like, oh my gosh, I was uh, playing with Chang Chang and TB in the same group. I probably can make it, but well, miracle happened. And then I look at all the schedules and oh my gosh, there are so many great players on my road to top six or top four. So I'm probably not gonna make it again. But I, I was um, on vacation in the past few weeks, so I did, didn't prepare that much and. I didn't play that much either, so I just bring some decks I know how to play and try to play like normal, like what, I, what I'm doing every day on the ladder. And, we, you know, sometimes good luck give you, give you some effort <laughs> to get into this stage. So that's kind of the thing. I did a lot of practicing with both uh, my teammates and good friends, Darkness and Birdo. I mean, as you can see, both Birdo and I are in the top four. Um, Darkness unfortunately lost uh, a bit earlier on in the tournament, but we all got into the top 32 knockouts practicing together. And uh, yeah, two out of three in top four is incredibly good. Uh, for the knockout stage, technically I didn't do anything special to prepare for it. For the couple days before the knockout, I had been camping. So the next morning, when I got back home, I tried to catch up on some sleep. Oh, and the tournament started. It was a really exciting time. Well, I worked a bit with Darkness, and I worked a bit with uh, J King. I mean, often we land on figuring out we want to play similar kinds of decks um, because we look at what the meta is like, we test those matchups, and then we get our results, and then we'll bring similar versions to be it an OCC or whatnot. Um, but this time around, we had very different opponents who we expected to bring very different decks. So we both ended up going with pretty divergent strategies, and I decided that I thought there would be enough of a variety of opponents that I went for what is I didn't really go for any counter matchups. I just went for powerful decks and it worked out for me. And James went for counter matchups and it worked out for him. So to me, I think it would just be cementing my position in cards history, um, being the first player to win back to back. And it would also, I think there's, there's some people who argue that, uh, my 2021 World Championship win 
means slightly less because I was originally knocked out of the tournament uh, and then had the opportunity to rejoin because other players couldn't make it, unfortunately. Um, so that's a bit of a chip on the shoulder that I didn't win a world championship uh, officially, um, I suppose, or like at least following the same opportunities uh, as every other player. So I think winning again would really show that that wasn't a fluke, it wasn't a coincidence, it wasn't just getting lucky that other players couldn't make it. I'm not sure, because so far, I still don't dare imagine it. When the top 32 started and I looked at the bracket, I figured I could beat maybe one opponent at most. But I was lucky to make it to this stage, the final four. As for your question about what does victory mean, it means I'm very lucky, but also very happy. I've been playing a lot for the past 10 months, and I hope to continue playing in these tournaments and enjoying the game with everyone. I feel like I have worked really hard on my gameplay and that I'm super thankful for all the help that I've gotten from J King, but I also want to be seen as my own player with my own play style and my own specialties. Oh, me and me, I would say, um, oh, I always define myself as casual player. I would say, uh, in less game, the gap between like top players or, or cash, casual, maybe vegetarian players are not that deep. So, um, in the last, before the last year, I was, you know, like, um, really, really casual, spent like more than half of my hours on draft, and then just didn't get that, that really good win rate. But last year, during the uh, World Championship tournament, I played and I tried, oh my gosh, I can I can get into this stage. Maybe next year I can move forward a little bit. So this year I was, oh, mm, breaking my own personal best. Lucky enough to have like had like kind of uh, my good folk who chat with me maybe every two or three days in this tournament. So I feel like mm, if someone like me want to, you know, mm, become become top player with adequate time involving in this game, they will be able to do so. Welcome back, everybody. It is day two of the Cards 2022 World Championships. We are going to name a new world champion this year, or maybe a returning champion. There is still a lot to decide. We started with over 2,000 players competing in the uh, in-client qualifiers. We are now down to three. Those three players are vying for the title of Cards World Champion. They are vying for a grand prize of 5,000 US dollars. It is going to be a huge day. We have a monumental matchup to start us today. And with me, we have our three analysts. We have Spooz, we have Alien, and we have Darkness joining me here. And uh, what we're gonna do is, is recap a little bit about yesterday. We're gonna talk a little bit about the matchup you're going to see in just a few moments. We have Oli getting ready in the caster booth, preparing for that first matchup. But before we dive too much into things, why don't we look at the bracket and do a bit of a recap as to what we saw yesterday. It was a bit of a wacky day, I won't lie. We had Berto Burrito taken on head, going 3-0 the shutout, putting him into the semifinals. J King then takes out Bamboo with the same 3-0 score. So our first matchup we're gonna see this morning or this afternoon for some of you is going to be Berto Burrito versus J King. Two friends, two fellow Canadians going head to head. The bottom bracket, we do see Head there also winning 3-0 defeating Bamboo, Bamboo going home here in fourth place, winning 1,000 US dollars. Head will be taking on the loser of Birdo versus J King in this double elimination event. So the loser of that matchup will go down. The winner will then get retribution and the opportunity to take on the winner for the title of Cards 2022 World Champion. 
What a day we had yesterday. Aileen, this is your first you know, world championship as community manager. What was your experience with day one? It was, it was amazing. As you say, being here for the first time, I joined the company uh, almost six months ago now. So this is my first time really taking on this huge event. Uh, and it's been such a privilege to be here. And I'm so happy with how everything came together. And now just looking at the matches yesterday, I'm totally mind blown that we had three three O's. Uh, really not what I was expecting. Uh, and it was really interesting for me, especially looking uh, at, the, at the player profiles, the stats that we have uh, in the player profiles that we reviewed uh, in yesterday's pre-show and comparing that to the player profiles from the top six and kind of really seeing that, you know, Birdo and J-King, uh, they spend a lot of time practicing. We can see that in the amount of, uh, of wins uh, and games that, 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 that they've played in that time. And so maybe not a huge surprise that they did so well, both of them, uh, in their first matches yesterday. Absolutely. And they're the ones we're going to see going head to head in just a few moments. Darkness, any highlights from day one? I think the first series, I, uh, I want to highlight Birdo here. You know, uh, for a very long time, he was like in the shadow of J King. He was like called J King's friend, his scholar, uh, his student, and uh, he had a small peak like one year ago or even longer. But he really put time and effort into it, and he really uh, became his own his own player, separating from his master J King, finding his own play style finding his own comfort decks, as, as we saw in the matchup versus Head, where he was able to, to defeat like the, the on paper stronger deck against his lineup, the German Italy control deck, just by really uh, going for the optimal play, finding the best possible strategy, making some considerable uh, worse moves, but leading towards the biggest chance of winning and overcoming at the end with this crazy uh, Mary Nostrum overdraw so so Head could not come back from the first series and Birdo just getting stuck in his head so, and yeah was able to to win the very first series 3-0 and of course together with J King there are three uh, people left today and two of them from Team Ammo. That, that was my highlight of yesterday. <laughs> you've got to feel good about that being part of Team Ammo yourself. I know you've helped both of them prep. I think both of those players have a, a lot to prove as well. We heard it in the, uh, the interviews that they did, right? J King <laughs> wants to really solidify his place in the history of cards and Birdo, like you said, Darkness, wants to kind of separate himself from the shadow of J King that he's constantly been talked about being his friend constantly been talked about being, like you said, his scholar, his student, his apprentice, whatever it may be. Uh, I think there's a lot on the line for both players here today. Spooz, what about you? What did you, uh, what did you experience that first day? What are your highlights? So what stayed in my mind was not just a very dominant show of Birdo and J King, um, just showcasing what the top peak level of cards actually is, but also just how Head just fought himself back into this tournament after he just got crushed by Birdo in the first series. Maybe due to a little bit of um, unfortunate draws there or overdraws with the Mar Nostrum. Um, but yeah, he just showed that he's the correct player in the top four here. He just showed that he's... Um, so he just um, showed that he was in the past tournaments where he was very successful in the last Cats Open, for example. He was very, very far. and. Yeah, I think he's here today to, even in interviews yesterday, he's just said, I want to face J King, I want to beat him, and that's actually what you need to become the world championship. Absolutely. <laughs> Master, yeah. To be able to show up and say like, hey, I, I've got the, the courage to say, I want to face the defending world champion, I want to face potentially the best player in this game because I think I can beat him now. Like that, that is something huge to call out. And like you said, Spooz, I'm pretty sure that's the, the medal it takes to be world champion in a game like cards. So thank you all for the recap of yesterday. Spooz, I'm going to kick you out of here because you've got a match to cast in just a few minutes. You and Ollie are going to be uh, doing J King versus Birdo, which again is going to be a huge, huge matchup. Um, Elin, anything specific you're expecting? Any predictions for this first matchup we're going to see today? 
This is a tough one, to be honest. We've seen J. King face Bardo before. We've seen them go kind of either way uh, in a lot of games. We saw them in the top six, and there Bardo was successful against J. King. It's, it's really tough to say they're facing each other with, you know, the same kind of archetypes uh, today. So how's it going to go? I'm, I'm kind of rooting for Birdo, uh, but it could go either way uh, from where I'm sitting. Absolutely. I mean, you, you mentioned it as well. They did play in the qualifiers. Birdo did end up winning that. Didn't stop J. King, though. Dropped to the bottom bracket. Is obviously here today. So we know that J. King can handle some adversity. We know that they've prepped well. You did mention both decks are, or all their decks are the similar archetypes they're, they're bringing, but they're not exactly the same list. And I know Darkness, you had obviously prepared with both of them a little bit, probably seen their decks. What do you think kind of differentiates the two lineups? Because on paper, high level, they do look very similar. They are, they are very, very similar. Of course, they have some small changes. For example, we talked about the Greyhounds in the frontline deck of, of uh, J-King to be prepared a little bit better against uh, the mirror matchup, to, to have a little more blitz units to push into the front line, to, uh, to use a blitz creek to overcome your opponent. But all of these are very, very minor cards. And those can matter. So both players are, are at the top of the peak. Uh, they are at the peak, like Spoos mentioned. They are very, very strong. So anything can matter. If, if one player is, is making one mistake, this can be crucial and can be game deciding. If you're drawing one, one better card, this can be game deciding. And at the end, those small changes in the deck list also can be game deciding. So at, at the end, it really matters at the small things, and this starts with the mental preparation. So whoever got more sleep tonight and is in a little bit of better shape is already having the, the upper hand, but of course this can get different if you're losing the first one during an unlucky overdraw. I can't wait to, to see how they are going to fight that out. Absolutely, and, and Darkness, I think, you know, you, you said it perfectly. There's a few nuances between the decks that could make all of the difference. Somebody could look like an absolute genius. J. King could look like he was brilliant throwing those Greyhounds in. And we even heard in the interview yesterday, that was a, almost a last minute addition, right? He made a switch, took something out, said, what do I throw in? Throws in the Greyhounds and, you know, next thing we know, that could be the reason he's going to get to the finals by, by defeating Birdo here. But, you know, could be come down to who had, who had a good night's sleep? Who had the right breakfast this morning? I know it's a little bit early uh, for our Canadian friends, so who's got the right mindset? And, you know, going head to head, do you think one of these players is just a bit more comfortable in mirror matches in general? Or do you think it's going to really come down to how these things fall kind of together? I think Birdo and Jay King do have so much experience playing on, on this level of cards, playing in tournaments, playing mirror matchups, they prep together really well. They are already on the same level and having more experience than Hat. So um, I, it, it's really hard to predict one, one of those. But yeah, I, I take Birdo as well and Ooh. I will predict a 3-2-2 two, two in the first series. I, uh, I appreciate you making a selection there. I feel like all being a part of Team Ammo, it's like I asked you to choose your favorite child. But <laughs> got, a, got a panel who's feeling Birdo here. I don't know. I mean, I think the level of play J. King had yesterday showed why he is back here again this year. We're going to kick it over to Ollie and Spooz. They're going to walk us through a little bit of the deck list, their predictions, and we're going to jump right into the action. day number two and it is time for the first series to kick off this one is taking place in the upper part of the bracket both of these players undefeated through yesterday and friends become foes it is j king seven versus birdo burrito and what an exciting series this is going to be I, I i can't wait until this finally starts um so the whole night from yesterday to today i was just, think, just thinking how must these players actually feel i mean they're both friends, they're here in the upper bracket of the World Championship and I think they're also just here to have fun. I mean, both are just 
they could live with it with it with the other just wins but yeah. they both really really want to have the championship title for themselves and yeah i think it's a win-win situation for both and i think they're having a good time together Definitely. I, I also do think, you know, there, there is a lot on the line for both of these players, right? You heard it. Jaking wants to solidify his win from last year. Birdo wants to prove that he's not just Jaking's friend. So even though this is a fun, all fun and games, you know, they'll, they'll be happy for there's each other. There's a lot of stuff you know, involved. There, there's, uh, there are deeper levels here. Yeah. So let's uh, let's take a look at the decks. Uh, if we can bring up the first deck, uh, we're going to run through these before we head on into the match. Both players bringing the same archetypes, uh, so there are only slight nuances between the deck lists of the two. Um, I believe uh, production should have the decks ready for us uh, in just a second. There we go. There we go. Starting with uh, J King's US deck, and here the story of the day is the is the Greyhounds, right? The Greyhounds in the first um, match from from J King there, we just saw what a big impact they had on the game in in the the matchups there. Like the three health, the blitz ability, you can mostly get two for ones out of it, and yeah, just it just showed that it was a good tech to put these in, and just J King made the correct de decision there. Yes, uh, next deck up. Um, it's also a double Blitzkrieg, and that's gonna be uh, uh, that's gonna be an important uh, distinction between the two decks. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the double Blitzkrieg <laughs> really making the difference sometimes, and it also kind of makes your opponent fail other decisions than if you don't have the Blitzkrieg. So, is there anything unique? Because I mean, it feels like the Jaguar list is just a straightforward Jaguar list. Yeah, I don't see anything that is outstanding here. I think this is just the the usual version, not any spe special tech card in it. I think this is just what is supposed to be the best checker deck. All right, next up from Jaking, we have the Soviet self damage one, and uh, <coughs> this one is a little bit interesting. I'm 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 gonna take a quick peek here to see if there is a difference. Yeah, I mean, there's no Shinoto here from uh, from Jaking. Uh, there's no counter offensive, so uh, quite a bit of differences uh, between Jaking and Birdo on on the Soviet self damage list. There is, however, that red banner play that you talked about. Explain that to, to people again. Yeah, so Jaking and Birdo too. I th I'm not sure who came up with that idea. I think it was actually Birdo. Um, just found a synergy between red banner and the 34th guards. Because the 34th guard, guards, whenever your HQ receives damage, they get their cost reduced by two. So you can slam them out very early with a 6-6 deadline. And if you are able to trade him into a frontline unit from your opponent, Plus, additionally, play the red banner on it if it survives. It can give you a lot of value back. Like, you get the damage on the unit, but when you play the red banner, it becomes a new 8-drop, which is in 50% of the time, uh, 270 second guards, which is a guard unit with a 6-6 six -six deadline on destruction, gets you a Joseph Stalin on the board. And if you can drop this on turn 2 or on turn 3, even turn 4 or 5, it's such a strong play. And this is what the Red Banner is really, really good in this deck. And both players bringing this special tech for the extra value to out, yeah, outvalue your opponent over time. And then the final deck from J. King is going to be his Brit Air list. Uh, we see it there. <coughs> the main thing that we haven't really kind of seen play out yet is the zeros, right? Yeah. Uh, there's two zeros in the deck here from J. King. There's one zero in the deck here from uh, from Birdo. And, you know, we think it's probably a mirror tech to, to protect against the bombers, right? Yeah, they that's, be... that's what I suppose. I don't see any other special um, situation where you need that one um, damage from the zero on deployment and the guard ability from it overall i think the zero is an underrated card like it's really annoying to get rid of like you usually have to remove it with an order so it's a good removal bait in that regard with units it's very very hard to pass by and it's also just four damage each turn from that so it's it's a real threat on the board Absolutely. Now let's swap on over to Birdo's decks um, and take a look at those. As we said, Birdo and uh, J King bringing the same archetypes, right? So here's the Brit Air, um, pretty much the same, but there is that single zero instead of two of them. Um, apart from that, what what is what is uh, Birdo bringing instead of that single zero? I haven't found out yet. I thought it would be the Sonya, but both play with two Sonyas just to have an early bomber there available to combine it with the Empire Strikes or for the good synergy with the British early game airplanes with the close air support. So I have not really found out 
Ah, oh, yeah, I found it. What is Birdo it? Birdo is playing four convoys, and J King is only playing triple convoy. Ah. Uh. And, yeah, J King just decided two zeros <coughs> is better than four convoys there. Yeah, well, it wasn't more exciting than that. Let's take a look at the next deck here from Birdo. <laughs> Uh, and there you see it. Uh, this is the U.S. frontline, and there are some significant differences here, right? So there's no Greyhounds from Birdo. There's no Blitzkriegs either. Yeah. Um, whenever Birdo is playing U.S. frontline, he always plays Iron Island Hobbing over Blitzkrieg, which is very interesting because I think Blitzkrieg can put a lot of pressure on your opponent, even if you don't have a hand, even if you just have one copy in your deck. When you have two, three units in the frontline, your opponent always has to remove them when they know you have Blitzkrieg in your deck or in your hand. And Ooh, the, he also has a Stars and Stripes, um, whereas J King does not. Yeah, maybe to attack against Brit probably, Air yeah, especially. Brit Air. So, but yeah, Birdo really prefers Island Hopping, which can be a very strong card, but also takes a lot of pressure off your opponent. Um, he also plays one Flam Panzer. And Yo. one additional thing you figured out. Fifth Medical Battalion. Birdo also plays that one yeah. over... J King not bringing it. Okay. Yeah, so J King is not bringing that, and it looks like um, you know, that's coming in in uh, over the, the Greyhounds. And also I, I over the Blitzkrieg, right? Like Medical <laughs> yeah, Battalion, yeah. Island Topping, kind of do the same. Like Island Topping, giving the unit constant stats instead of just this one turn plus three attack. But overall, I prefer at least one um, Blitzkrieg under that. But the Medical Battalion can make those Fifth Rangers and Shermans really sticky on the board, right? So For sure, yeah. If you're able to establish it, but it does, however, come into play a little bit later into the game, so I think it's kind of safe to say that Birdo's playing more around that late-game control, uh, whereas J-King is playing more around that early-game control on, on the, the US list uh, in particular. I think this is super exciting because both players are bringing the same archetypes, but there's su these subtle nuances in, 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 in these different decks that they are kind of going to be the deciding factors in a lot of these matchups. Yeah, and Yesterday we saw um, that we were actually wrong when thinking about Sudden Strikes and Flam are better in the mirror. It yeah. turned out that the Greyhounds had greater, greater impact than Sudden Strike and Flam Absolutely. And there we see it, uh, the Birdo uh, Soviet self-damage deck. He is running the Shinoto. He's running the counter-offensive. Uh, that's a combo that, that J-King is not running. Um, he is, however, not running the Euros. Right, so he's he's opting for the counter-offensive secondary win condition. Also has the red banner in there, but no Euros. Yeah, because Euros also not good synergy with the Shinodo. The Euros only affecting yeah. Soviet units, so he just decided to to cut the Euros. Also no um, Katyusha in the deck, which would be good synergy with Ura. So you don't want to have too many orders. You also want to have units on the board that you can actually buff and you can actually operate with so you have to have to make some cuts at some ends and yeah Birdo just taking this attempt here to create a Soviet self damage deck. All right and then the final deck here from Birdo Burrito is uh, Jagro and I think I think these are identical. Yeah I think so too. Both play Triple Shinodo over Mido Regiment and yeah I think they're just completely identical. All right, I think that that's it for the decks. Uh, I mean, I we just need to get the bands. We need to get this show on the road. Uh, we are excited, even Absolutely. though even though my voice is about to abandon the party right now. I I'm I'm gonna keep on going until until I can't make an even like a tiny little sound, spooze. This one is uh, f this one is a large large portion of the the viewers people believe this could be the finals right yeah. so we might be seeing two best out of fives between these guys here today um you know of course the loser going down to the br loser bracket they're gonna face head and there we see the bands oh, no soviet self damage yeah usually when i think we saw it when was it in the first or second series series like soviet self damage is a very very popular ban option and also all four players broadest brought this deck archetype this world championship so i think it is supposed to be the best deck at the moment that's why everyone is bending it yeah um i mean it's it's a deck that has the widest like good matchups right like widest range of good matchups out of the decks being brought into the tournament so i feel like you know soviet self damage has a, has a great matchup into drag row it has a, a a good matchup into into u.s frontline um and it can win brit air and that's what jay king said in the interview yesterday so i think that's the thinking behind getting rid of that uh, is that it just has decent matchup against the rest of the three decks yeah hey, uh, very very likely this is the reason and so both players are just left with their US frontline deck with the J 
Jagro deck and Brit Air. We see Brit Air in action again. So, what do we expect to bring both players first here? It is going on. The match of the Titans here. And it is US Frontline from J-King versus Jagro from Birdo. So from the facial expressions, we cannot really read anything if the players are happy what they queued into here. Birdo actually looking not too happy, but I think he's just thinking a lot here. And J-King found the Greyhound. Very important yeah. against Jagro, actually. <laughs> and going first, right? Yeah. So, so even even if he drops it and, you know, uh, Birdo finds a 15th Cav and pushes it in the front line, turn two, J-King can trade that and take the front line again. So what Birdo needs is exactly what he's having in hand. 15th Cavalry plus Befehlswagen. He just found it. What a good mulligan. So we did actually not see, unfortunately, if he had one of those options already in hand or if he just bo found both out of the deck. But this is such a big advantage for Birdo now. Having two units, just like you said. Otherwise, J King could have just traded the 15th Cavalry away, go to the front line, and it would have been way harder for Birdo to reconquer it. Although he's not really fully relying on having the front line, as J King is doing, but you want to have the chip damage early on against um, US Frontline with Jagger. Yeah, but what, talking about huge uh, draws, what a massive top deck there for J-King. Finding the 32nd to get that uh, second unit uh, established on the board for one credit would have been a tricky spot if he was only sitting on, you know, let's say he draws a, his second, we can do it there, right? What is he going to do until turn four? It's going to be, uh, you know, pretty difficult. But finds the 32nd, is able to get rid of the 15th cab, establish his own two attack unit to counter that Befelswagen. Uh, now the question is, does Birdo Burrito want to rip an early, you know, desperate measures or something like that? I don't think so. He just wants to take uh, the trades and, and slowly but surely uh, establish his board presence. That Greyhound was at three health, right? Yes. He did not. No, no, no. It was at it was at one because uh, it was used to trade the fifteenth calf. So that was actually very interesting. Maybe he you just went two for one on the Beffus Wagon. So I think with the. He wanted to protect the Type 93 with it, because otherwise Jaking could have just traded the 32nd into it, and did c could have gone for the Type 93. I, I just wonder why he did not go face there, although he had desperate measures in hand, which would have killed any unit on the board at this state. Um, but yeah, I think it, it was okay to protect the Type 93 there, probably. The on-curve key could be a pretty scary prospect here. Yeah, it's also a double-edged sword, right? Like, if you drop it here and your opponent is playing a swordfish, uh, a half-track, you kind of lose a lot of tempo. I'm not sure if you can afford to do this. I think we just might see an arrow do, but even that. It is actually very tricky. I think he kind of has to go for the key here, just to establish a big body on board and just hope that Jaking is not having a half-track, which he actually is not having. Oh, but the Blitzkrieg comes out. Uh, he does not have enough credits to use it, though. No, he's one credit off Wirbelwind <sighs> into Blitzkrieg. Also good from Birdo that he established the key now, because Wirbelwind is another threat. Yeah. That if it's in the front line, your key is kind of useless for one turn. But I think, uh, I think J-King's feeling all right here, um, because he knows that because he has the double Blitzkrieg, he could potentially just rip the Blitzkrieg next turn. Oh, he can't anymore. Uh, Desperate no. Measures thwarts that plan. That was a lot of value out of the Desperate Measure. Now it's the question. Yeah, you don't want to miss six face damage. You always let that Skytrain live there. You have two bodies in the board. One of them is Fury. The Skytrain is just popping a unit that Jaking cannot operate this turn. Jaking's dead in two turns if he doesn't deal with that key, and there's no immediate way for him to deal with that key. Not really. Also, besides the we can do it, he's not having any healing in the deck. So once Birdo finds Shiden, a signal regiment, it can be a fast ending here for Jaking in the first match. But actually, we can clear the front line here, but that key is still a huge problem. I mean, it's all infantry. Also, Shinodo, anti oh, dive signal bombing. regiment. Dive bombing allows him to at least take the, the, the key threat off the board for a turn. Um, 101st Airborne and uh, Strategic Bombing will get rid of the key from the back line. So if he's able to start establishing a good frontline presence here, that might be enough for him to, to claw himself back into this game. But he's going to be at a, at a pretty difficult spot for a while now. So what can Birdo do? Uh, it 
could be good to go Eridu first, but then he's probably missing some damage there. So he could go 35 Signal Regiment, 35T, and first of all Eridu, just to find the bombing rate for an additional 3 damage. He just, he just Signal, 35T, and then hit face with both the key and the 35T. You deal 8 damage, put him down to 4. Oh yeah, I forgot, he, got, he needs to operate the key additionally. Exactly. And down to 4. Then and you can still play the Aradu next turn, uh, find the bombing raid. Absolutely. And also that Signal Regiment is just... Even if J King is killing both units now, he's down to 2. And that Aradu is a 50% chance actually to find the bombing raid. Because there are only 2 orders left in the deck. It's the Feint Retreat. Or as we also call it, Frightened Retreat. And the <laughs> <laughs> and the bombing raid. Um, so Birdo in a really, really good spot. Jaking has to be can do it, but this is only healing him back to seven, which would be actually yeah. lethal on board for Birdo. No, so he's a dive bombing the key, and then we can do it, um, and then operate his units, right? Yeah, really have to play dive bombing on the key. There's no other option than doing this. And he's going to have to sack the fifth rangers into the 35T. But he's um, still that and from the Shinodo. <coughs> so he does not know, but he needs to play the we can do it. Oh, no, no, he can operate units to the front. Yes. Line. Yeah. He can, he can, uh, One of those uh, units goes to the front line. Exactly. And then he's still receiving one more damage here. Okay. Okay. That, that works as ah, well. Ah, yeah. The, the, those unit or this unit is just dealing one additional damage to oh, you in the same oh, front. Oh, half. loses the half track. Overdrawn. Yankee Doodle Doo. What are these nice emotes? <laughs> I've never seen them before. Jaking has the best emotes in game, I guess. Okay, double type would be two damage to the face. Yeah, this fifth ranger in the front line is a kind of a small problem here for Birdo. Also, that dive bombing setting the attack from the key to zero is not really what Birdo needs at this point. And Jaking's hand is kind of full of useful stuff here, but he needs to find a way to get rid of the signal regiment. He needs to find a second we can do it. That's the big thing. He does have strategic bombing so to potentially get rid of... Uh, to go far and getting rid of it. Down Maximizes on. the face damage there. Three Hellcat overdrawn. Now that key is back to eight attack. J but King far away. <laughs> he's having Blitzkrieg. Is there any way he's winning here with the with the Greyhound? Oh no, he's only having one unit in the front line. This is not really enough. So he has Greyhound, to kill the key. That's what. 12, how is he getting uh, rid of nine. the signal regiment? This is why I prefer at least one flump So just so uh, Alberto is having having it in his list, just to have that one option that you can top deck to get rid of stuff like signal regiment, like. He needs to invest a 100 first airborne and a strat bombing into this just to kill one unit there. That cost Birdo one credit. Because this is the biggest threat at the moment. I mean, sure, the key 83 can just bypass the front line, but he should not. Otherwise, he need, does not really need to care about the, the Type 93s there. But with Signal Regiment, even those one drops that cannot reach HQ are a big threat. Because if they die, it's just one additional. Jing's gonna run out of time here, and you know everything that that he can potentially do here is not good enough, right? This takes him down to two, just sacrificing those two Type 93s uh, into oh, the front line. Uh, guaranteed bombing raid draw now for for Birdo. Yeah, and there it is, the bombing raid found Finding. off the top. Sitting on the feigned retreat as well. And you could see Jaking was not about to give up. He was going to play this out until the final moment. He tried everything. He put the Sky Train in the front line. Do you know why he did that? It has zero attack, but it has HP. So it would have not allowed Birdo to trade both his Type 93s into something in the front line. And it would have absorbed the Shinodo as well, which means that he could potentially have to lay it for another turn. That was an extremely smart and big brain move there made by Jaking. Unfortunately, Birdo drawing the feigned retreat, having the Arado, being able to find the bombing raid, yeah. was able to finish the game out. But that shows the margins of error in this game. And now, what do you do if you're Jakey? Do you just bring US again and hope that you get the mirror matchup? Is that what you want? Do you want to swap to Pridair? Do you want to do your own Jagro? That's the, that, now this becomes a chess match. Yeah, and I think 
Jaking just stays with his decision here because I think he's okay in the mirror. He has the, the Greyhound as we saw that, that it's a very good tech in the mirror matchup. But he's also good against air with this. And I think he just goes with the same again. And we see in one second if this is actually true. Yeah, these players are thinking. They're thinking about what decks to bring next. Oh, this is so intense. I feel like I mean I feel like Jaking just brings it the same, but I think Birdo's then bringing both bring US. No, both, both bring bringing US, US. Okay, it's the mirror matchup, and I think this one's going to be interesting because there are slightly different takes on the US frontline deck here. Yeah, one of them, uh, just as we saw earlier from Jaking, or in the first match, he's playing with the Blitzkrieg. Birdo is playing with Island Hopping and Flam Panzer in it, and it could just come down to those tech choices here who's winning or losing the series or this match now so that was not a good mulligan for birdo Ooh, at all no no 30 second no red devils <laughs> no one drops Second's right and he knows he knows this is going to be a tough tough match for birdo but look how he's laughing i mean i i just like the attitude of those guys it looks like they're just having some friendly oh, matches here, 99th but... infantry off the top further buffing that 32nd and allows jaking to deliver five damage to face here if he wants no 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 uh, this into a pir um, he's just developing his board bouncing the pir making it even more annoying for birdo to to just come back here or even harder because now he just has to play it, replay it again or has to decide if he wants to play a sky train in it, which would not be the best option here. I think you just go PIR again, but then look what we have in J King's hand here. Just another half track. And when we see that, he's, I think he's just delivering the first face damage here to Birdo. And yeah, this start was really, really rough here for the Burrito Man. <laughs> Rough is, I think, an understatement. And, I mean, the the next couple of draws, also not great. Finding a Sherman and the research, that's uh, not helping you as much. You know, if he, if he was able to pull, uh, opting for the depth charges here, staving off some face damage, I think that's a little bit weird because the amount of... No, I think it's, it's not about saving him HQ damage here. It's about gaining the credit slot. He wants to have, like, his hand is kind of... Yeah, you can play one unit at one time and i think he wants to get the big units out he wants to get the sherman he wants to get a we can do it on it a potential hellcat um th i think this is what the death charges was for not just for saving him three damage here that, that would have made no sense it would have been way better later on it's just for the credit slot deciding to drop two units now and from the sky train there comes another one actually a good one yeah, looking to probably get as many units on the board as he can to be to be able to start mounting his defense. Yeah, just like we saw yesterday from Bamboo, he decided to go to the front line over developing a board while his opponent was on the on the front foot there, and that did not really pay out. You want to have bodies on the board that you can trade into the front line units from your opponent, and after that you want to regain the front line. You don't want to get one unit to the front line and then your opponent is pushing pushing stuff back uh, stuff back yeah that makes no sense yeah that makes a lot of sense and and red devils here a great pickup from birdo burrito and um, at least gives him a one credit blitz unit to get rid of uh some of the stuff on board he he could theoretically both blitz out the red devils and the hellcat and uh, trade out multiple units it's always um, painful to trade a hellcat into a one hp unit exactly. but i think at some point he is forced to do it because i mean there's 13 damage sitting in the front line right now and with the and two potential Panzer Blitzkrieg, yeah. so you cannot let this uh, exactly. front line uncontested. You really have to get rid of it. Oh, he Ooh. just... He rolls the dice. The balls move here. Pulls up the blanket. He wants to hide from his decision. He's going like, no, Blitzkrieg, please. Blitzkrieg would be lethal, right? Yeah. Oh, it's 22 damage. <clears throat> I mean, with the... No, the it's, yeah, it's 22. It would yeah. be 22. No, with the Panzer 35T as well, that would be uh, easily lethal. Yeah, but Jake Berto did not see it. So he just did a very, very brave move here, deciding to play the long-term move over the short-term. Because if Jaking, he was just thinking, if Jaking has Blitzkrieg here, I'm dead anyway soon. Yeah. So I have to take a little risk here, hope that he's not having it, develop myself a board where I can just come back from later. And this is why he did a move here. So far it paid out, but still a lot, a lot of stuff to just remove from the front line here. 
Oh, the medical battalion Ooh. giving the PIR that one attack it needed to trade out one of the units. But with the 35T damage, this is going to be enough. And taking really quick victory here. Seven turns in game number two, tying the series. And this is the first 1-1 one -one we see this World Championship so far. And as expected, both players just trying their best here. It just comes down to the... To the nuances, like the starting hand here from Berlo not being optimal and Jaking just abusing that and equaling the score in, in this series. No, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit sad that we didn't see what Burrow started out with in his hand to know what he threw out uh, in, in, in a chance to get, get kind of better cards or if he mulliganed a lot, but definitely not the greatest mulligan. And, and it set him up for failure in that match, unfortunately. Yes, it always feels bad when you have like three, four, five one drops in your deck. You have a you go second, you have five cards in your hand, find none of them, do a full mulligan and find... None of them. Yeah, none <laughs> of them. Just cycle through 10 cards and I think in your this 40 is what cards deck. Berto, Berto experienced here. So yeah. let's hope he's having a bit little, little bit more fortunate starting hand next match. So now J-King's front end deck is finally out of the equation here. So he's having Japan, Germany left. And Brit Air left. Yeah, and I mean, he's probably expecting Birdo to stick with the U.S. frontline deck, so he has to choose which one he wants to take into that, and it looks like that's going to be Japan. But Birdo switching it up. Birdo queuing Brit Air into Jagro. J King. Befelswagen. Not too happy about that, but found the Befelswagen. Now he only needs. Okay, he found a Type 94, but Birdo with a monster starting hand here. Three, one, credit fighters. One of them is a bomber. You play the gladiator here, right? Because of the fact that he played a tank first that is able to go up and deal damage, you play the gladiator to be able to return damage over the swordfish, which will just absorb the one damage next turn, right? I'm not really sure. I mean, you probably do it. If your opponent showed an infantry unit, like the 15th cavalry, to the front line, then you always play the gladiator because there's a very high chance that there's a 35T follow-up, and then you can at least get rid of the 15th cavalry. In this case, I think the bomber is a little bit better because, sure, he's receiving one damage now, but he can trade the tight 94 for free. He can develop more gladiators into it. And but the bomber is going to get traded for free now. Yeah, sure, but the gladiator would also die. Sure, it deals one damage. It's it's a tough one. It's, it's one I mean, you cannot trade for free. You can just drop the Albacore on the Befehlswagen and then there's still two bombers on the board. That's true. But Berto decides to take the coin flip decision here of sacrificing a swordfish or receiving two face damage. And there is the 35T. Unfortunately for J-King, not an infantry unit on the board. Yeah, I think this is going to be a turn where we see him operate the units. Uh, takes the free trade onto... Uh, Onto the bomber there because you do not want to leave bombers unchecked on the field if you're Jackro. <laughs> no. So many 1 HP units that can be traded out. I wonder if he's going to drop the Panzer 35T without getting off cost. He decides not to. Floats two credits. And there is uh, the zero. Yeah. Will Ooh. we see the zero making an impact in the game here or not? I mean, if this goes to the front line, it's very problematic for, for I, taking. I think, I think dive bombing is a crucial card in dealing with that zero. Because it allows you to bypass the ambush. Is there a dive bombing in this in this jagger list? I don't think so. But usually it would be very, very good, yeah. So found the infantry unit, 35T to the front line. And Birdo slowly but surely running out of good stuff here. Sure, he has the second parachute, but what do you even trade the gladiator into? There's still... Stopping the card draw, so dropping another gladiator. Left. Gladiator into PRR. Putting the parasite down as well, saying if you want to, PRR, to yeah. uh, uh, if you want to hit my gladiator, you're gonna have to pay for it. But the, the raiding brigade waiting in hand there for Bird, uh, for J King. Uh, unfortunate, it gives him a great favorable trade there. But now we might see the zero come out, and oh. how will J King deal with it? He's just gonna send it. <laughs> <laughs> very very likely the like ping gets a kill though so gets a unit 
Sendai? And he also has the Sendai Regiment out of the way, like when he's ever finding a Spitfire now, or the Wellington, speaking of the Spitfire. This would be a lot of pressure on J King's side, I guess. Uh, yes and no. I mean, he does have the resources that he needs to oh, trade it. Perfect draw. Swordfish yeah. into air superiority can actually help to get rid of whether the Sender Regiment to get your, what was it, down? Uh, zero. The zero back. Yeah. Or just get rid of the Raiding Brigade. He just decides to look for Empire Strikes, I guess. Because I think this is his only option to really come back here. Although I would have preferred to give him the, the Ooh, zero back. Key 83, a lot of pressure. A lot of damage on the field. Birdo has the type 94 to get a surprise attack out of it, to pin it for one turn. But I doubt... Oh, the Sonya. Sonya, but no good synergy. Birdo really needs the Empire Strikes as soon as possible. Or a Monty. Monty or Empire Strikes. Is he playing Shelling? That's what I'm actually sh looking for here. Oh, he's playing Shelling. He's playing Shelling. So Shelling, Monty, Birdo. Shelling, Monty, the Empire Strikes, right? Third convoy already. Another air superiority. So he can get rid of the key. Deciding to pin it first. So he gets more draw out of it when it's J King's turn. Yeah, plays the, the Swordfish plus uh, an air superiority to get rid of uh, one of the units in the front line. Decides to go for the Raiding Brigade because this has still two Finds the Empire HD Strikes and there. There's the Empire Strikes and another Swordfish. But the Shinodo plus Befehlswagen is another 8 damage. And this is a range where Birdo does not really like to be in. Like, Desperate Measures, Raiding Brigade is all just lethal for J-King, you know. Plus, J-King has the uh, two Aradus in hand. So whenever, even if Birdo is yeah. able to look at this, he's another gonna, Empire. Oh, <laughs> he finds him in the wrong wrong time. But, I mean, he's, he can wipe the board with uh, dropping the, the Swordfish, uh, popping the Empire Strikes, and using the other Air Superiority. He can right? drop Sonya, Swordfish, Empire yeah, Strikes, yeah. Air Superiority. So he can clear the board. But then it's exactly happening what I said. J King with the double Aradu, there's a very, very high chance, uh, there's a guaranteed chance to find bombing rate or desperate measures out of it. And Ultra. Ooh. Ah, it's a shenanigan play. But he also needs he doesn't, to yeah. get a board, right? <laughs> he doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have enough uh, credits to, to make that play. He needs to go at this exact line here. Oh, he already has one bomber on board, so he does not need the second one. Could have dealt one more. Ah, yeah. So, if he would have deployed one additional bomber, it would have been one more damage to face, but the zero would have been lost, because the support line would have been full. Yeah. And, yeah. The Jake double Aradu, Aradu is going to find, there it is, the bombing raid, or the desperate measures. Birdo knows it. Good game, my friend. And Jaking takes the lead two games to one. Turning the series around. So what I would love to see now is just Birdo making it 2-2. And then we have a, five, a fifth match and a very, very intense series here. I mean, it is already intense yep. by now. But I think it can be even more intense if it just comes to a 2-2 here. It's uh, J. King's Brit Air. That's his final deck. So, Birdo knows what he's going up against. He can choose whether or not he wants to go US frontline or wants to do the mirror. Yeah, that's a good question. What do you choose here? Do you want to have the mirror where it just... The only difference is uh, an extra convoy versus an extra zero. It's a very, very similar. So, it depends a lot of who's, who's going first, who's going second. I think you just take frontline here just to avoid the mirror where it's mainly depending on, on luck maybe or unfortunate who's having a better starting hand who's going second it can make a big difference so I think if you're Birdo you just go US here yeah, yeah and indeed that looks like what he's doing Birdo Burrito bringing his US frontline deck into J King's uh, Brit Air deck and J King uh, doesn't look like uh, he found the perfect starting hand I mean yes air superiority is good um, having the Albacore relatively early is good but no uh, no gladiators uh, no <coughs> no bombers not 
the best on hand. He so there's no swordfish. To... There's no gladiators. There's no close air support. There's no kind of early snowball that he can throw out there. He was also considering keeping the shelling, I guess. But usually, I think against U.S. frontline, you need to play a little bit more aggressive and fast before they can just drop out their Wilberwinds, their half tracks. So J King really struggling to find the correct yes mulligan here. Do you and keep the Monty ever? Uh, looking at the <coughs> starting hand for Birdo, J King needs to find some good stuff here. He does not. It's okay. 109th Combat Engineers, Panzer 35T, Warblewind in the front line, turn three. Warblewind in the front line is the Brit Air killer, right? He found a swordfish. That is so important. Massive. That's also a very good way to get rid of the 109s, because now Birdo's 35T. Look at Birdo's face. He's not absolutely not happy with that one. He cannot play the 35T and go to the front line because there's no longer an infantry yep. unit on the board. He's not getting the plus one attack from it when going to the front line, so he cannot trade the, the swordfish efficiently away. That swordfish draw might have just won the game for Jaking. Or at least like it gave, gave him a chance in this game. If he does not have that swordfish and he just has to drop like an albacore or something, I think he just loses because of what Birdo is able to do. The fact that he's able to spend turn three on getting the Whirlwind uncontested into the front line and then pinning every single bomber and, and, and plane that comes out for yep. basically the remainder of the game, that's going to be... It's a, it's a tough one to crack. And now Birdo's in a really, really tough spot here contesting two bombers on the opposing side with only infantry units so far so even the 35t is only having two attacks so cannot kill one of these bombers and j king just wiping the board away with the bombers and air superiority and burrow just again with an empty board what can he do here i think uh surely he's looking for the opportunity to play like a 30 second uh, a Panzer 35T and then a 99th Infantry to buff yeah. the You can do this on turn 5. You can do 32nd, yeah. 35T, 99s, which yeah. would take care of one of these bombers. But I also expect this Type 94 to go to the front line next turn. So he also yes. needs to prepare to kill this. Maybe he's just dropping a Wilberwind now, operating this, to attack one of the bombers. I think this is what we are going to see here. It also just stops J King from dropping more stuff into this i wonder if you almost should have traded the type 94 just to make sure that you know if j king is able to trade that warble went back which he he is able to if he attacks with both uh swordfish and uh, pins it with the albacore then j king wouldn't be have anything to take the front line it's the only thing that could have blocked the play but j king uh, opts instead of using the type 94 to trade and now the half track so uh Birdo's, uh we can say trajectory back into this game is is now uh, laid in front of him. Uh, <clears throat> that was actually pretty huge. So also, J King making the play here of just keeping his other bombers in hand because he knows that Birdo has the strat bombing in the deck, and uh, not the strat bombing, but the stars and stripes, and. This is actually a really annoying card for Jaking because he cannot go too wide with his bombers. Because whenever he does this, there's a risk that there is a very, very high value um, stars and stripes for Birdo. And this is why he just holds his bombers back here. And yeah, a little bit pressure on, on Birdo Burrito's side here just for that reason. Oh, the Hellcat is so good. The Hellcat is good, but the question is do you hold it back until you can use it to proc the Sherman draw? Doesn't I think look you like still it. have the 99s. You have yeah. two bodies on board now. You trade one bomber away. Sure, your opponent can have the Empire Strikes. Then you would wipe the whole board again. And you cannot get the Sherman draw. But I think this was the correct play here. Because Jaking is also low on cards. And this means he is probably running out of options. So, yeah, we definitely see a half trick here this turn. Or, or you dive bombing the the Spitfire and take the draw. Looks like that's the route that he's going to go for. Because just establishing the Sherman in the back line is, is, is huge. Wait. He does not give a... He, he does not care about the Spitfire. <clears throat> okay. I mean, 
that is a higher IQ play than, than I would be able to do. Because I, I mean, mean he's getting that 20 closer. HP here. Even if J King has double or triple close air support, it's not lethal yet. But on the other hand, it's also a big amount of damage here. Just um, reducing his HQ health by a half, leaving him with 10 HP. But maybe Bird is comfortable that just in case he can still drop the death charges, maybe. Deciding to drop uh, to bounce the Spitfire now. Oh, the Empire Strikes coming out. Uh, that does help J King in clearing the board uh, as we go deeper into this game. He's not playing it this turn. He wants to have more bombers uh, established. But that Sexton is keeping that Sherman pinned. And there's nothing going into the front line. Birdo can't draw. And he's already bounced the Spitfire. No half track. <sighs> Also, the Plum Panzer is really useless at the moment since there is no one drop left on the board. And I think there's no other option. Yeah, what are Burr's options here? <laughs> he could do, he could just go twice into research, right? But he's going to take 12 damage. Yeah, I think you, you if, he, if he goes the three and six credit research, then. He can get nukes next turn, but he's on a two clock timer with the board from Jaking. Two turn timer. He can also not go white here. Like, if he's dropping Sherman, Sherman 109s, there's always the risk to Eden Monty yeah. or Shelling, and then you still that. But Monty has been used, but Shelling. Oh, Monty was used. Okay, then there's only the Shelling left. Type 94, that's going to pin. That means that there, only one tank will be able to operate. Only the Flampanzer will be able to go into the front line. And that's if. J King just decides not to kill the Sherman, right? That that that's a close air supported sexton, so it has four attack, so it can just take out the Sherman. The Spitfire can take out the Flampanzer, and all of a sudden there's nothing to move into the front line. There's nothing to do. Getting rid of the 109s to protect against first the 35T, and second option is he can. Trade the plump Panzer away without killing the Alba, uh, losing the Albacore. There is a strat bombing, but that is not doing too much. That close air support is uh, is really wreaking havoc for Berto right now. Just the Saxton being at four attack instead of three yeah. is is pretty big for Jaking. Yeah, whatever he's deploying now, he's just losing it to the Saxton. That Sexton has kept that Sherman pinned for three turns now. And it is paying off massively for J-King. I think Birdo is slowly running out of options. He can do death charges now, but that is just delaying stuff a little bit. He's losing the pinned Sherman, maybe, with this play. But oh, I, I think that's game, to be honest. And this would be would be kind of a surprise here. It's 14 damage on the field here for J King. So Burrow just running out of time. He's not looking happy at all. No, and I mean this is the only thing he can do, but it's just gonna get killed by the Sexton. <coughs> he needs a combination of stars and stripes and strap bombing now. If he if he gets that if he if he top decks stars and stripes next turn he might have a chance. Yeah, the problem with his with his orders are that J King is also running ultra. So whenever J King is floating credits, Birdo also has to play around ultra. And yeah, I think. I mean, at this point, he doesn't have a. Oh, another an option, Sherman, right? and that's it. It's the fourth Sherman. That's gonna J King be it. having twelve damage on board. He can do death charges, so he's yeah. not dead yet, but. It's also not helping him. I guess I guess you strap bomb and you de do death charges because if you... Yeah, you need to do it in that order. Yes. You cannot do it otherwise because then you lose your research and then you need to play around ultra here. So strat bombing first, death charges, J King finding the convoy, giving him even more options now. And Birdo, I'm not even sure what Birdo can find here. Stars and Stripes is also not good enough. At this point, it will not kill the zero. Yeah, exactly, right? The zero 
playing a, a huge role here because the zero plus the Wellington is going to end the game. Half track, not going to be enough. Nothing to blitz into the front line. Nothing to get the draws. Medical Battalion, Sherman, half track. None of this is going to change the outcome of this game. And J King 7, the reigning world champion, secures himself into the grand final game from the winner's bracket, undefeated so far. If he was looking to show that he is a legitimate world champion, going undefeated all the way into the grand finals, potentially going undefeated through the top four is the way for him to do it. He really, really showcased that that he's the man to beat here, that the top four playouts have been a slight accident, although the series was very close. Um, but he got beaten by Birdo, but he just showed, hey, I'm the boss here. I'm here. I want to win that whole event. I am the one to beat. And yeah, he just showed how, how well prepared he is. And Birdo finding himself in the loser bracket. I think he's still in a good spot to, to win the event. But he has to beat Head now. Mm -hmm. And this is the series we are going to see next. Yeah. We'll throw it over to Caristo and uh, Darkness and Alien uh, to talk a little bit about this game. There you have it. We have our first player to make it to the grand finals. J King Seven are defending 2021 world champion, trying to double down and win this year again. Defeats his friend Berto Burrito, who will be dropping to the lower bracket. Berto is not done yet. But Alien Darkness, I mean, we had the predictions before. Both of you were kind of feeling Berto. Alien, what, what do you think of this? J King manages to, I mean, have a pretty strong performance here as well. I expected this one to go down to the last moments, but um, I mean, J King looked pretty solid today. He did. Um, this wasn't a completely dominating uh, sort of game like we were seeing yesterday. You know, he did go 3-1 uh, in this one. But I mean, like I mentioned earlier, we've seen J King and Birdo go back and forth. Um, it really, it really could have been anyone's game, I think. Uh, and Birdo maybe could have played a couple things there slightly differently. Um, I, I think that uh, I'm not sure how it would have. Uh, I, I'm, I wasn't 100% uh, expecting this outcome, um, but I'm, I'm excited to see how Birdo goes uh, in the next one. Uh, and of course, I suppose. Uh, J King being the reigning world champion, I'm sure he's incredibly happy to be uh, fighting for the top uh, spot again. That's it, J King gets to kind of put his feet up now, gets to take the next series off, watch Birdo take on head, figure out who's going to be playing next. Darkness, I mean, again, there, there was a lot of back and forth there. We saw some good draws on both sides. We saw some strong mulligans on both sides. Break that down for us. Where do you think J King really was able to separate himself uh, in this matchup? Yeah, this, this matchup was really interesting to follow because both players are really strong. They know each other, so you can see the emotions, the emote spamming, and of course the, the back and forth. And it really came down to, to the mulligan because both players showed peak performance. In the first match, Birdo was able to win, and he, he was, yeah, with Jay Acro able to hold the front line and to, to hold J King back uh, with, with two Panzer Befehlswagen actually. So he, he had extra push, extra tempo to get into the front line, to stay there a little longer and to just grind down the HP. Uh, this is where we thought Birdo was having a real good start. But in the second match, the US front line versus US front line, J King was able to come back and was yeah, just dominating the mulligan, uh, fr from the mulligan, with having more options, way cheaper units to get into the front line. And you saw during the first few turns, like turn, turn three, turn four especially, he was just slamming a bunch of units into, into the, the field. And without enough uh, possible AOE, Stars and Stripes and Strategic Bombing is only able to get played turn 5, turn 6, and Birdo didn't even have that. While J King was already sending units after units into the front line, he was just playing this uh, very, very strong, and Birdo wasn't able to come back. In 
in the third match, we, we saw him trying really, really hard. Um, he tried to, to uh, get the maximum momentum out of his airplanes, out of his units by not by turn two, not trading into the front line, till it, killing the TK, but killing the Akita regiment, tanking the destruction effect with his HQ and preventing J King from sending another Panzer 35T to disrupt the momentum. But it was just not enough, and J King was able to to actually find two Arados, guaranteeing him the lethal damage. So there, there was the cards were on J King's side there, and in the end, at the last one, J King J King start was not looking good. Birdo start was actually looking much better with the tons of units, but then J King kind of top deck after top deck, starting from turn two, finding the gladiator, being able to kill the combat engineers. So Birdo had no infantry unit left to send the Panzer 35T without operation cost into the front line and not being able to kill the bombers allowed J King with very little units to establish a board and putting really, really pressure on, on Birdo. He was trying hard, slamming his units onto the fields, but J King top decked <laughs> again after again, finding the Empire Strikes, finding Saxton, locking down the Sherman, preventing Birdo from, from finding more card war and not leaving him with units in the front line, with, which caused Birdo by actually running out, out of time and out of options at the end. So I, I think both players played exceptionally well and at the end Jaking had a little bit better options to be able to, to win 3-0 against Birdo here. I, I think that that's a great way of breaking it down because you could even see on Birdo's face as he was playing the game, he just wasn't getting the cards he wanted. You could tell that, hey, I have a game plan, I know how I can get myself out of this situation, but if I'm not drawing the cards, if I don't have the ability, like in the last game, having the Sherman pin, not being able to get the draw, um, things like that were really limiting his ability to execute his game plan. So uh, I agree. I think Birdo played an excellent series there. I'm very, very excited to see him go down to that loser's bracket, take on head, see who will be facing J King in the final. Speaking of J King, we do have him on the line now with Ollie for a winner's interview. Hello, J King, and congratulations. You have secured your spot in the final game of the World Championship. Uh, how does it feel being undefeated so far and knowing that you're going to have uh, a guaranteed chance to play the series to secure yourself that back-to-back -back World Championship victory? Well, I have to say it feels pretty good. I think it is a little unfair to say I'm undefeated yet because I did lose to Birdo in top six, and I think that just shows how close the margins are between the two of us. Um, if he does beat head and come back and we play again in the grand finals, I'm not expecting to like smoke him because I beat him once. Um, so yeah, I think it's still, this tournament I think is still very much in the play and I think anybody can win it. All right, let's talk a little bit about the, the series itself. Uh, game number one, uh, you lose that one. Did that make you nervous? Uh, did, you, did you think, uh, or, or did you still feel relatively comfortable um, having, having his jack roll list out of the way? I mean, losing to Jaguar is something that you always have to expect is going to happen. Uh, obviously, you don't want it to happen in the first game because there's certainly decks that can take wins off of Jaguar. It's not something that's going to absolutely dominate, but it is something that's almost certainly going to win. You're not going to beat Jaguar three times in a row unless you're really lucky. Um, but I was pretty nervous after losing the first game uh, when that key came down. Obviously, I have two dive bombings, three half tracks in the deck that can at least either answer it or deal with it. I thought I'd be able to stick a unit in the front line to kill it with Blitzkrieg, um, but there was the desperate measures. So obviously Birdo knows all of this and likely that was his only play to win. Um, but it worked out for him and he played it to the best of his abilities and I played it to the best of my abilities, but uh, the draws just sort of came up short in game one. Uh, so going into game two, I was a little bit nervous, but uh, my draws definitely turned around after that point. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, speaking about draws, uh, in that in that final game, your hand was looking uh, pretty grim after the mulligan, and then on turn two, getting that uh, a swordfish uh, off the top that allowed you to activate pretty much the rest of your hand. What were you thinking uh, going into that? Were you, uh, do, you, do, you have, do you have your fingers crossed being like, please be a unit off the top of my deck here? I mean, that's just sort of how you have to play the Britain Japan air deck. Um, when Birdo first sent me the list, because he was the first and the first sort of uh, come up with, it, with this idea of bringing Britain Japan air to worlds, um, and then obviously I helped refine it a bit. But when he first sent me the list and I played it on Ladder the first few times, it just felt like every single game I was fully running out of resources, and it was I just thought this deck is bad. Um, but I sort of realized that. That's just how you have to play. All of the cards in your deck are so cheap. You have to rely on draws, not because you need to top deck and get lucky to win, but just because your deck is so concentrated that like 80% of your draws are going to be good. So it's not necessarily you need to top deck to win. It's because the majority of your draws are going to be something that is good in that situation. So in that situation, I needed a one-cost plane to be able to play the air superiority to kill combat engineers. There's eight one-cost planes in the deck. Um, so, I mean, yes, I definitely got lucky, but that was not off of the mulligan. I think I likely was considering my hand a lot better than maybe the casters or the audience were, uh, just because of experience on the deck, knowing that you often end up in situations like this, and then you still come back and win just because of the quality of the draws you have. Very interesting. Uh, one thing that we did get to see was the mirror matchup between your two U.S. decks, right? Um, talk to me a little bit about that mirror matchup because uh, the two tactics are, are kind of a little bit uh, different, right? Uh, he's got the medical battalion. Uh, he's got no blitzkriegs. He doesn't have the greyhounds, whereas he's he's more lo seemingly focused on later game control, where you're kind of looking to gain the edge early. Uh, how did that play out in that mirror matchup uh, for you, and and how are you viewing that mirror matchup in general? I mean, I think the mirror matchup between our two decks, I would say that it's pretty close to 50-50. Um, I think if someone has the advantage, it's likely him. Um, just because the cards in his deck that generate value allow for him to win in situations where the draws, it, it's sort of close. Uh, often the US mid-range matchup sort of runs away, in which case I can use Blitzkrieg to end the game faster. But uh, Blitzkrieg is a completely dead card if he is running away with it. Um, however, if it's a close game uh, and it goes long, he can use research and nukes will essentially immediately win the game if he can get them in hand. Um, or he can use the medical battalion for very powerful swing turns if the front line is contested. Uh, so I think he has the slight advantage, but I mean, it really looks like he just didn't get the great draws. Um, and I think the Greyhound it does help in the early game, like getting control, making it slightly more consistent in turns one to three. And US Midrange Mirror is usually a game that's decided by turn three. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, uh, last question. I mean, I don't, I don't really think I need to ask this. Uh, you know, I know you, you're going to want to see Birdo make it back into the grand finals, so I'll, I'll put you a little bit more on the spot here. Uh, how do you think that series in the lower bracket is going to go? Do you think it's going to be a 3-0 like we've seen so many times so far, or is this going to be a, a highly contested series between Head and Birdo? Um, I, I don't think we're going to see a 3-0. I mean, I, Birdo is definitely more than capable of beating Head, um, but also Head is a great player in his own right. Um, I don't think Birdo's decks are necessarily like a hard counter to Head's decks. Um, I think the 3-0 was in large part uh, due to just the quality of the draws on either side, and maybe to some extent uh, Nerves being the first game of the entire tournament. Um, but this is day two. Uh, both players have now played two sets, and coming in here. I think it's going to be game four, maybe even a game five. I wouldn't be that surprised to see. All right. Thank you so much, Jay King, and congratulations again. I can't wait to see you again in the grand finals match a little bit later. But for now, I'll let you kick back, relax, enjoy the upcoming series, and mentally prepare for your uh, yeah attempt at a, at a double back-to-back -back world championship. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ollie. There you have it. We have our first player to make it to the grand finals. We have JKing7 ready to defend his world championship here later today. Spooz, Ollie, what a, what a series that was. You know, Spooz, in, in the interview, we heard JKing basically say, sure, I, I won. Maybe it was three to one. That series was maybe 
a little bit closer than it seemed to be because he knows that Birdo's such a great player. Do you agree that in that scenario, maybe Birdo just wasn't finding what he needed and if the draws had been a bit different, that series would have potentially turned out with a different outcome? Yeah, I think especially in the third and fourth match, it felt like Birdo did not find the correct pieces there. He had a good start into the match and then J King just finding the correct answers after the correct answers. And Birdo never had a chance to really show what he's able to do because he was always on the back foot there. And I can feel, we already saw this in his facial expressions, right? It felt really, really frustrating for him. It's, it's hard to just overcome that point where you just see yourself in a position where you have less and less options. And you could really, really, that's why I like the face cam. You, you really saw it in his face. He was going through his hair. You could really see the frustration, and I, I really feel him there. And yeah, he's finding himself in the lower bracket, but, but still has a good chance here to advance to the finals. J King, our finalist, just showing that he's here for, for a reason. And yeah, he's the one to beat in our final match today. You see him going through his hair. You see him pulling his blanket up and, and holding <laughs> his blanket, just in frustration or in comfort, one of the two. Yeah. Um, Ollie, you know I love take, talking psychology of esports with yeah. you. You've got Birdo now, who loses to Jaking. He's, you know, that could have maybe been 50-50 a coin flip. Doesn't feel that bad, but okay, I have to go to the bottom bracket now. I have to play against Head. I have to beat Head. Then I have to play again. I have to play three times today and try and beat Jaking in the final. What do you think that does from a mindset perspective to Birdo in this situation? Uh, I mean, it definitely has the potential to bring a player down. Uh, you know, we, we can say that. But some others uh, thrive under adversity. So, you know, on which side is Birdo going to fall today? I guess we're about to find out. Uh, I think, you know, good news for Birdo is that uh, the archetypes that, that he is bringing has uh, already 3 0 head, even though there's slight variations. Um, you know, his preparation and practice with Jaking uh, has probably prepared him well with that. Um, he probably feels relatively confident going into these uh, these matches uh, in the lower bracket, but then composing yourself and going for another shot at a five-game series in the grand finals uh, themselves, you know that's uh, an entirely different challenge. So uh, we could we could see you know he wasn't really happy with the cards that he was getting. He wasn't really happy with the plays that he was forced to make mm -hmm. because I, I don't feel like he made any, you know, mistakes, so to speak. But, you know, he was definitely forced to make plays that were suboptimal. Now, that can weigh on you. Uh, but I think it's just important for Berto right now to to acknowledge the fact that he didn't have any other options. He, he needed to make those plays. And I think he's a, a smart enough player to know that. So... I think he's going to come out all right. Um, I think this could definitely rattle less experienced players. Um, but, you know, these guys have put in so many, so many hours and so much effort on the practice side that I think, I think he's going to be just fine. I mean, we saw Jay King last year come through the bottom bracket to make it and win the world championships. Could very well see Birdo do something very similar here. You know, what about Head now coming into this matchup against Birdo? Do you think... Same principle, he's coming in going, hey, may maybe I could take advantage of this scenario. You know, I got to sit back, watch this match. I didn't just take a loss. I got to shake off yesterday. I'm feeling good now. I'm ready to go. I can maybe squeeze my, in my way into this grand finals. Uh, very likely. And I mean, I, I, I 100%, you know, Head wants to face Jay King again. He, he said that in his, in his interview. You know, that's, that's the matchup that he wants to go for. So uh, he, now he has to go through Birdo. Uh, I think he feels equipped and capable of, of, of doing so. Uh, also, he's gotten a good night's sleep. Uh, he's, he's been able to compose himself, think about, you know, what mistakes he might have made yesterday, what he wants to mulligan differently. Um, he did go three games against the same archetypes against J King. So now he gets to make adjustments after that. And he is the, the remaining player in this that's bringing a, a different type of deck lineup, right? You know, he's got the US Poland, uh, he's got the, the German Italy control, control right? Uh, both of these can be uh, powerful decks uh, if, if, they're, if they're played appropriately. I'm, I'm expecting we're going to continue to see Soviet self damage being banned. So uh, I, my prediction is that he's going to have to win with both of those decks. Now, maybe he gets to pull them out and show why he brought them. And, and I think he's going to be excited for that. And if we remember, you know, Jakey got knocked down on day one uh, last year. He was the guy that took out everyone in the tournament, you know, in, including uh, coming back in the finals and, and uh, winning that. Maybe Head does that uh, as well. Mm -hmm. I just think, um, I got to say, you know, I think it's just going to be so damn hard beating Jakey uh, with the, the mindset that he's in right now. You know, it's just, 
uh, he, he seems to be here and he seems to be like, oh, I'm gonna win this, uh, no doubt about it. We said it on the pre-show, right? It's that extra gear that Jaking has where when he decides, hey, I'm gonna win this, he just decides, I'm gonna do this now and does it. Um, but you, you brought up an interesting point there where, you know, Head's already sort of faced these archetypes, lost, had time to adjust, is gonna get to play Birdo. If Head beats Birdo, he's gonna go face Jaking and he's gonna play against the same decks again. So you can build a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum in that matchup to say, wait, I, I just did this once, now I get to go do it again. Yeah. Um, Spooz, any thoughts on this upcoming matchup? We've got Head, we've got Birdo going one-on-one -on -one to determine who's going to make it to the Grand Finals with J-King. I mean, the big advantage that Oli already mentioned it, kind of, uh, is that he had one night to just recap everything. He could have maybe watched that first series from yesterday again, where he was up against Birdo, and just look, did I make any mistake? What did I learn out of it? Like, we already saw it yesterday in this first series, when in one match, he overdrew the Mar Nostrum. Yeah. In the second match, he thought, oh, that was such a key card that I lost in the first match there. I better keep it in my hand in the mulligan. And I think he could have maybe done this over the whole series from yesterday. See, um, what did I do wrong there? Where could I have maybe missed a chance? Learn from that and then just take it into today's match and maybe be successful this time. Absolutely. Definitely had that time to review the tape and figure out where he's going to make some changes. So we're just checking in, waiting to see uh, if the players are getting ready. Obviously getting Birdo a second to go, stretch his legs, uh, refresh a drink maybe, uh, get that blanket going. Um, so we're going to bring up the bracket here, give you a quick recap of what we've seen so far. Obviously we saw the three O's, the three three O's from day one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> absolutely wild. J King taking on Birdo, defeating him three to one, going to the grand finals. We got Birdo versus Head in the bottom bracket. Before we kick it over to the casters, and I'm sure they'll dive into this in a little bit more detail, I'm curious because when we saw um, Birdo uh, take on Head yesterday, we looked at the, the that Germany control deck that you mentioned, Ollie, and we you thought that you know maybe maybe that's a bad matchup for Birdo, and maybe Birdo considers banning it, doesn't, ends up beating it despite maybe on paper not being. Um, you know, set up to beat it. Do you think that Berto looks back at that and goes, well, I beat it that time, so I'm cool now? Or does he look back at the tape and say, well, last time I played, maybe I should have made that ban, maybe I changed my mind, or does he go with the winning game plan? I mean, I think, I think Berto won that game number one because of the Marinostrum overdraw. Honestly, I think that Marinostrum overdraw, if, if that gets played on a unit, um, it, it can turn the tides of that game. So, uh, I think definitely still a chance that he bans that deck. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But the fact that he didn't ban it round one, given how meticulous of a player he is and given his preparation, I think he probably will ban the same as he did that time. Ah, I don't think he's going to change things up um, out of, out of uh, matchups because uh, I think he just feels confident in being able to beat that deck with more than one deck in his lineup. So that single match uh, is probably not gonna be the deci decision maker uh, or the deciding factor when you have, let's say 20, 30 practice matches of data uh, that also play into, 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 uh, uh, into your decision. So, so for me, that's gonna be the, the big thing. And, I, and for me, that's the big difference maker between the performances that we're seeing these players put on. It's just preparation, it seems. And it's gonna be interesting to see you know, if Birdo makes it back into the, the grand finals, uh, this is going to be, because if, if you think back last year, right, it was Jaking and Darkness in the finals. They're also Team Ammo members. They're also great friends that practice a lot together. Uh, Jaking went the opposite direction then. He went down on day one, won his way back. Darkness went all the way through the upper bracket and then got, you know, beaten in the finals in the five game series. So are, are we going to see that potentially, you know, the, the friend falling down in the lower bracket, winning himself back, beating, a, beating his friend in the finals? I, it's, it's, it's fun from a storyline perspective. So, uh, but it also shows that J. King is able to beat players that are extremely familiar with his decks and with his play style uh, consistently in that tournament setting. And, and that's a very impressive achievement as well. Absolutely. You get, you get one word answer. Head, burrito. Birdo burrito. That's two words, but whatever. <laughs> Spooze. I also go with Birdo burrito. All right, we had, two, we had two analysts go Birdo before the last matchup, and things didn't quite go his way. We're going to see how this plays out. We are going to have the finals of the bottom bracket right now. Loser's going to go home with, I believe, $1,500. Winner's going to go on to face J King for the Cards 2022 World Championship. Aelin, Darkness, break it down for us. 
Thank you, Christo. We are back, Darkness and I, in the casting booth, and we are about to bring you the second series of the day where we find out who is going to be facing off against J. King in the finals for the title of Cards 2022 World Champion. Incredibly exciting. We had a great first matchup of the day, um, and now we're about to see Head versus Birdo Burrito. Now, we had a deep dive uh, yesterday uh, into both players' decks, and of course, we saw. Uh, some of Birdo's in action uh, earlier, but before we head into this uh, next matchup, how about we take a quick reminder uh, of the decks that the players will be bringing into this series? Yes, so Head and Birdo Burrito, I don't know if you're able to show them. Here we are. Starting with Birdo's decks, first we saw it against J King, Brit. Japan Air, very powerful, very much momentum, a little bit late line with the zeros. This is his first deck and the second one will be uh, shown right next on screen for you. Of course, we just saw this in action. Um, yeah, uh, there's the second one. This is US Germany Frontline. Jacking actually talked quite a lot about this when with uh, Ollie in the player interview. Uh, of course, it's a fast deck, it's a snowballing deck, it's a deck where you really want to get into the front line and want to to abuse the synergy with for example the combat engineers and the sherman and the curve is, as well is very very fast and very powerful that is the second one the third one is also powerful and fast this is soviet japan self damage and this has tons of different opportunity it's it's not easy to learn and very hard to master, but Birdo definitely did it. Um, you're using the Bloody Sickles, the Winter Warfare, in combination with the Japan Recans to get more card war and damaging your own HQ to get the synergy with the 34th Guards. Hopefully we will see this in action and it's not getting banned like J King as against Birdo, both bands this deck. And last but not least, we do have the J Aggro. Japan main Germany ally, the classic aggro deck of cards, very fast as you can see, main drops with one credits and two credits. It's just pure aggression towards the opponent's HQ over the front line. Yeah, this is Birdo's lineup, very fast, very aggressive. And next we will switch to heads lineup. Indeed, Birdo bringing some uh, some pretty uh, classic meta decks here. Yeah. Um, head and a little bit different. A little bit different, exactly. With US, he did not choose the US German frontline, but US Polish legions. Very interesting choice. I deep down yesterday into it. Uh, as a reminder, it is Polish ally with the legions mechanic, like from Plan Vest or underground state uh, they are benefiting from the intel mechanic and this helps even more to build a ton of stats and this can snowball very very fast and aggressively but also being very strong in the late game just by the pure amount of stats so a little bit slower a little bit more control the second one uh, of heads deck is another snowball deck very very similar to Bertos, a Soviet Japan self damage. There are only some minor tweaks, overall, the same mechanic. Berto chose to ban this in the first matchup, but we will see the bans later. The third deck we are about to see from head will be German Italy control. And this is the only real control deck with a lot of removal, like early removal, sudden strike, flam panzer, even late removal, like annihilation and Leopold, and some powerful tools from Italy Ally. The only Italy Ally 
in this top four world championship with Mary Nostrum to to heal you against aggressive decks and some guards like decisive defense, Bologna regiment, and sevens Alpini regiment. Very powerful. Not powerful enough day one in Birdo versus Head, but maybe powerful enough day two for Head uh, to to reach the next and the grand final. And Head's last deck, of course, let's not forget that, is also Brit Air with Japan Ally, like J-King and Birdo Burrito are playing. This one is a little bit different. It does not contain the zeros, but the naval supply run. So this is a little bit more, more snowball heavy, uh, as you see with this desperate buff, powerful buff, buffing every unit plus two plus one while discarding a card the turn after. So it's two edged sh sword here and an, an addition to, to make this air deck already, which, which is already very fast, uh, even more snowball potential to to really overcome your opponent. Yeah, that's the head up, uh, that's the lineup of head. Yes, uh, and some, you know, some different decks here that we're seeing from these uh, two players. And of course, as you mentioned earlier, uh, these two did fight in our first series uh, yesterday on day one. Um, and yesterday, Berta was able to take head 3-0. Do you think we're going to be seeing a replay uh, of this today? I don't think so. I I. I am expecting more like in 3-2 and it's very hard to predict. Maybe Burrow is able to play flawless again and is keeping his streak against Head. Um, but I think after after Head's impressive win against Bamboo, 3 airing him, he's back in the tournament and he hopefully got some confidence to 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 strike as good as possible against Berto Burrito to to not make it an easy fight and and decisive win like last time like yesterday absolutely maybe head has uh, gotten out of his head a little bit uh, like he was in that <laughs> first uh, matchup um but ban picks what do you predict darkness Birdo was yesterday banning the self damage deck of head. I did not agree, but Birdo was able to to defeat the German Italy deck, so he's not scared of it. Maybe he was lucky. Maybe he just has the right strategy. Uh, since it worked out very well, I'm expecting him to ban Soviet self damage again. Also, I would prefer banning German Italy control. And from head's side, he banned Brit Air, if I'm not mistaken. And maybe he will switch to Soviet self-damage, banning yeah. that one, knowing the bans. And no. looking at them now... <laughs> they uh, did not change. <laughs> they banning exactly like yesterday. Berto got his Brit Air deck banned, had got his Soviet self-damage deck banned. So it's a rematch. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see. Um, you know, uh, very curious to see whether Head's um, performance yesterday was just down to some nerves and a little bit of bad luck. Um, and whether he's able to turn it around today and show that, uh, no, he can actually 100% um, take Birdo on with this lineup, with yeah. these bands. Yeah, um, the same bands. I, I do like it. Now we, we are going to see how this will play out again. And it's not the easy, the easy match again, so to speak, if, if any match is easy in the World Championship. Because the loser is disqualified. And, and this is it. And here we go. Birdo Burrito bringing his uh, US frontline deck with Head bringing in his uh, US Legions deck. I'm very excited to see this. With with J King and Birdo, we saw the 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 real mirror matchup between the front line. Now it's it's like front line versus legions, what is definitely different. And both players are starting with the thirty second infantry regiment. Had of course going first maybe a little bit beneficial in with with uh, this one turn, this, this one movement advantage, but oh no, he got the 32nd infantry again, so this means 
he he just lost an opportunity and card drop on the mm -hmm. other side he mm -hmm. does has the red devils sending this into the front line it's really really tough to deal with because birdo has to spend more credits actually two more credits to be able to fight against the red devils one of the best cards possible in this matchup Head grabs a, 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 a ramp card there. Now Birdo has uh, filled up his backline with a 32nd uh, infantry regiment there. Um, but as you point out, frontline uh, already occupied by Head's Red Devils, uh, which might take a little bit for Birdo to be able to break through. Um, Head really evaluating his choices here. What would you be going for? Uh, definitely the war machine. Mm -hmm. And I would send the 30 second infantry regiment into the front line to occupy the front line head chooses a little bit different still going for the ram card what will benefit him uh, in the long run because he he's able to to slam more units on the field which was just really helpful uh, to get in Sherman earlier to get more legions into the playground mm -hmm. but Birdo yeah. grabbing that Flammpanzer uh, from the top, uh, and he's he's got uh, quite a lot of uh, options in his hand, uh, and really taking his time to think them through. Because those options are not great. He he can't play half track onto the Red Devils. He can't play Flammpanzer because Red Devils need one additional credit cost. He does not even have four credits to to attack into the Red Devils. So maybe he will just drop a Wilberwind or a half track to send back 32nd Infantry Regiment, which is not not efficient at all. He could play the Flampanzer, kill the 32nd Infantry Regiment, and trade next turn with the Flampanzer into the Red Devils. Looks like he's going to choose that one. Yep, but that seems to be the best situation. Slamming Sherman onto the ground drawing a sky train and Very fifth strong. rangers he get way more options that is desperately needed right now for head and he just is playing another 32nd infantry regiment not really caring about the front line the the single red devil unit made it so hard for Berto Burrito. He's finally in the front line, but mm -hmm. it took a lot. It did, it did. That Flampanzer clearing things up. Um, does Head want to immediately clear it up again? And he does. A uh, quick trade with the 32nd Infantry Regiment there. Well, he really has to get into the front line again to, to just... Uh, occupy it to block Birdo from building a board. Uh, maybe even trading because of we can do it, but maybe the Sky Train looks very strong here. For example, sending the Sherman into the front line to have 4-4 four, four stats there, okay. protecting uh, the support line and the Sky Train, who will keep spamming out units. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, and he's really really taking his time to think this through. It looks like he might be agreeing with you, Darkness. He might be. Oh, ten, ten seconds. Time is running. <laughs> Choosing between the infantry regiment and Sherman. It is the Sherman. It's finally the predicting train. something correctly. <laughs> and he got this little buff unit. Birdo not really happy about it. He he needs the front line to to make use of the 99th Infantry Regiment. Currently not possible. He he has options, but those options are not great. I see the Panzer 35T coming in here, uh, and after he traded into the Sherman with the. 32nd Infantry Regiment, he can occupy the front line, kill that 1-1 one, one infantry in the support line and play another 32nd Infantry Regiment to to hopefully get something out of the sport. But he's definitely not able to clear heads units. And he traded first. Wow. Playing... The infantry getting into the front line and trading trading at least something out. 
really, you know, he had he had to pay dearly for that front line, but it is worth it for Birdo so that he can, as you pointed out, build up his uh, his board a little bit more. But it is a, uh, it is uh, quite the battle here for the front line, just a constant back and forth, um, and 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 it's fairly easy for uh, for heads to kind of push back uh, in again now. Yeah, trading into the front line, sending the 5th Ranger, dropping the 32nd Infantry Regiment, looking really strong from head here, making things harder for Birdo. As uh, Jesco won't do a lot since people are not damaging the HQ right now, but uh, another Infantry Regiment uh, is beneficial for Unity's strengths. Uh, the very right card on left hands. So this will stick around with smoke screen and will make things different for Birdo when he chooses to use his buff card. Mm -hmm. Well, Birdo has definitely options to deal with this board. The Shermans and 99th Infantry Regiments are basically useless, but the Medical Battalion is buffing other units plus one attack. So this allow Birdo to trade with fl the Flam Panzer into the 5th Ranger, clearing at least the front the front line. But uh, Head has such a good position now with the Skytrain constantly sending out unit units. The 32nd Infantry can get into the front line, block the front line. Uprising can send ba back the medical battalion to hand. And now Karis, a bomber, can place next to a guard while buffing the legions. Or had is just choosing Unity's strengths to get an additional one drop by the Sky Train, both really strong. This play was not that strong to be honest, because Birdo has the half track, if I'm not mistaken, for three credits, the second left card. Mm -hmm. Or is it the Hellcat? His hand is very small to see. <laughs> but it's getting very full, so it gets harder <laughs> with every card. I think, well, both cards are able to remove. And it is the half track, mm -hmm. I was right. Mm -hmm. uh, this card can send back the buffed unit in the front line. So this will remove any buff. And the fifth rangers are going into the front to, to block it, to occupy it. Making it very hard for Head to, to actually get rid of it. He mm -hmm. has to attack twice with legions and 32nd infantry regiments mm -hmm. or just using uprising is not beneficial because he would raise a legions unit so the the last move by not playing the cavus not playing the bomber really hurt the gameplay of head here of course he still has the sky train sending units after units into the battle and he's actually using the Jasco, getting a second one out of the Sky oh. Train, to to just block the front line, to occupy the front line. Yeah, and so you know, looking at where Head's position is right now, um, how is Birdo really going to get rid of that Sky Train? Uh, actually, it's it's very very hard. He first needs to kill anything in the front line and then needs a Panzer 35T buffed by 99's infantry regiment. But he does not have the credit available right now mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. And But it's going to largely continue to be this, you know, really tough back and forth um, until he's really kind of able to push through that uh, Skytrain properly, isn't it? Yeah, he, he really needs to find the Stars and Stripes. To, to kill maybe four units in the support line or to get into the front line and using the buffs of 99th infantry regiments. Those units, like the Shermans, are waiting pa <laughs> uh, for, for a long time patiently in Birdo's hand, but we aren't able to, to get there yet. Look at Head. He's, he's even sending the second Jasco wow. into the front line instead of playing a Karis, a Bomber to get more card draw just to prevent Birdo from, from using those units. And that really shows you the, uh, the importance, especially in this matchup, of control of the front line. The front line is the most important part in, in this US front line against US religion decks. 
and we, we see those decisions using four credits for the Jesco sending into the front line affecting the game massively because Birdo has a lot of options but not that many. He still cannot reach the Sky Train. Uh, with Hellcat attack he can kill the Jesco or he's using the fifth ranger what is a little bit better because Hellcat can reach the support line as well. Panzer 35T finally able getting buffed by by 99's infantry regiment killing the legions but the the sky train will still live. Uprising how much damage will that be? Two. With two damage it looks looks very very nice for his head here. He won't lose the sky train will kill three units of Berto, one of himself and being able to to play two times Karas. Uh, unfortunate he does not have legion units to buff Riz because he holds that long. Indeed and he goes for the research instead uh, working up uh, two levels. He's going for the research Two, two times research, meaning he's close to get the Manhattan projects. Another turn of nine credits to be able to play those nukes, putting a lot of pressure onto Birdo Burrito here. Now, Birdo is finally able to kill the Skytrain, but the Skytrain did a lot this turn, uh, this, this match. He was, I think, five units, five or six units so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah. Huge, really, really huge uh, from head there, and he it really helped him uh, have a have a great hold on this game uh, up until this point. Um, but Berto kind of feels like he might be making a little bit of a comeback here. He has a ton of options and a ton of units, and it will take at least one more turn for head to to use the nukes. So Berto is looking to send everything into the front line to deal maximum amount of damage and closing the match out. Yeah. He knows that time is limited and we can see him just stacking up those units in the front line, getting and rid of the sky train, getting rid of Head's entire lineup. Um, getting rid of ex of everything, actually. He's expecting Head to play the research now to get the nukes and he prepared a ton of damage to deal with it, to to play around it actually and closing out the game. This will be potentially 10, 19 damage with Hellcat rating on field and the 99th infantry regiment as well to, to buff everything and the medical battalion also. So Head cannot go for the research, he would be dead next turn. The only way to play around is by playing Uprising and killing so many wow, units. Wow, that is a huge ouch. Yep. Birdo's, Birdo's board just, just got wiped there. I mean, he's got a couple of units left, but that hurt. Burrow's not happy about this, but those bombers seems a little bit desperate. Burrow is able to play, uh, to, to just kill those bombers. I don't think this is enough, but look at those intel. Head knows everything what Burrow has. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting Burrow to drop the medical battalion to heal the Sherman and to heal the fifth ranger. Mm -hmm. And of course, killing those bombers to prevent more car draw for head. But this is not what Birdo wanted. He wanted to to uh, to kill head or to deal a ton uh, of damage this turn. Yep, and this really puts head in a pretty good position, doesn't it? I mean, in terms of that research. Yeah, he's very very close to the research. And Birdo trying to put as much pressure as possible against him, buffing the first ranger, not using the medical battalion. So he was able to deal six damage, and there are a lot 12 on the field with head knowing there's a Hellcat. This is again potential lethal damage next turn. Mm -hmm. Head cannot go for the research because Birdo has simply too much damage. Mm -hmm. But this top deck of California Regiment is able to deal with the 5th Ranger, able to trade into them. 
So I'm expecting Head to play the California Regiment. Maybe this we can do it, but maybe he should just go for the Section 2. Uh, of course, getting intel and more card draw. No, nope. goes for the we can do it. Choose. A little bit of defense, a little bit of card draw. Choose the we can do it. Actually, really strong prepar preparation because of Plan West. This will spawn two legions, and Hat has two intel cards to buff those and making it even harder for Berto Burrito to deal with with those defenses. Indeed, Berto grabbing another half track uh, from his deck there, weighing his options. Half track is nice, but you don't really want to send back California Regiment. You want to to kill it with nukes like strategic bombing. It's not great, so dive bombing will take care of it a little bit. I don't know if Berto should trade into it right now or just deal eight damage to to HQ. This looks like the better play. Yep, he agrees with that. He goes for eight damage uh, to face pushing uh, a lot more of his units up front to get ready to deal that potentially lethal shot. Um, I think this is a right play because this is so much pressure. Head cannot go for the research again. Um, actually, he can, but not, but not with the Manhattan Project. He could go for penicillin, drawing five cards and buffing his units. Mm -hmm. This would be a strong play. On the other side, just playing section two and drawing a single card, buffing the legion is also strong. And with Tano Regiment, there's another option for him. He does not have to go for the uh, for the war machine. Just Tano Regiment would be beneficial to get more card draw. He chooses to not play Tano Regiment. Finding plan best, this will be a potentially uh, another guard. But this is not what Head wants. Mm -hmm. He wants to get two out of them. Mm -hmm. So he's Goes going for, for the, the war, war machine, machine. Gets the extra credit slot there. A little bit of... Is that an advantage at this point? Is is it? He could have played the Tano Regiment to get an additional card draw and another unit on field to deal with Birdo's front line. Now Birdo's able to use the half track sending back one legion and really really threatening the the hq of head absolutely absolutely that they, they does not have a lot to go there head sherman taking out the legion and this is a ton of damage coming in from birdo wow More is than that enough. it that is it it is the first wow. match birdo was his head being able to win with the frontline deck against the uprising deck. A little bit surprising because the legions usually have a little bit more stats, a little bit more AOE, very very uh, crucial usually in in this matchup, but had did not uh, weren't weren't able to get into the front line, weren't able to find Shermans and uh, finding enough stats to, to deal with Birdo's board here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end, Birdo played played I think flawless and had made a couple of minor uh, decisions that benefited Birdo in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Birdo was playing incredibly uh, strong throughout, you know, and even when he was on the back foot there in the beginning, he he kept through. He made the right decisions and he was able to break through and pull out the win when the moment presented itself. Yeah, amazing performance from Birdo Burrito here. I agree definitely. Uh, what a strong start in the series. Absolutely, and uh, and who knows what we're gonna see next? Which decks uh, these guys are gonna be picking? I guess that is uh, that is the tough call right now. I I, uh, I agree. Both players really thinking right now what to play next. They they played against each other, and they both know how strong they they are. Had lost yesterday, but Birdo just lost against J King three two one. And whoever loses here is out and out of this world championship. Absolutely. And we are back in 
to the second game in this series. Birdo taking his uh, J Agro lineup and Head taking his um, Brit, Brit Air. Air. Yeah. Brit Air versus J Agro. Usually, Brit Air is a little bit favored. We saw J King kind of dominating Berto mm -hmm. in the very same lineup. Berto mm -hmm. holding his head, not happy with the mulligan. Mm -hmm. Looks like... But this... he he's, I think he sent away all of his cards and the mulligan looks definitely good. He's got the bicycle regiment dropping that uh, straight down. I'm missing the Panzerbefehlswagen. Mm -hmm. Air mm -hmm. superiority will take out the bicycle regiment. So Berto... Finding the Panzerbefehlswagen, not being able to play it right now, but the Type 94 TK plus the first signal regiment are really, really strong. Mm -hmm. uh, as turn two, two units and preparing the next one. And he has the Type 93 there in his hand as well, getting ready for the right moment to go out. Head just getting the uh, Albacore. Albacore is able to kill the the, t uh, the little tank, the Type 9040K, but HMS is a little bit more credit efficient and placing s two Gladiator on the battlefield with each with one, three stats. They do have Blitz that turn, but Head does not have credits to attack. So it it's really worth considering. Do you want to just plain drop them, not using the Blitz? And looks like he, he chooses not to. Killing this unit with the Albacore destruction, uh, with Albacore deployment effect. Mm -hmm. Well, Bird Burrito does have ways to counter it. Mm -hmm. Second Raiding Brigade, it is just killing the albacore still not able to send a unit into the front line and now head finding swordfish but again not being able to to kill that unit with with two blitz attacks from hms maybe maybe he could just drop three bombers like playing hms and swordfish mm -hmm. uh to have three bombers with Stats, nope, he chooses the Spitfire. Definitely a strong decision. But Birdo is able to play around that with the second type 94TK and two surprise attacks while sending second raiding we got into the front line and wow. getting the Panzer Befehlswagen. This was huge. Absolutely. Double surprise attack taking out that Spitfire. Head is not looking super happy about this. Not in a great position. Definitely not in a great position here. He he does have several options. One of them is Monty, looking strong, pinning everything, and uh, getting another card draw. Second Paracy, very valuable with those little bombers. He now can choose to attack one unit, uh, or he's he's going for it. He's going to to drop another swordfish, maximum maximum power here mm -hmm. with a close air support in hand he he can buff three units he needs a top deck this sheeden has ambush he, it's not another close air support had really needed this the second buff to to handle sheeden here <sighs> now he's he's attacking into the front line he's not taking care of sheeden mm -hmm. this could be a mistake. I'm I'm not sure actually. The Sheen of course has a lot has a lot of of operation cost mm -hmm. but not taking care of Sheen uh with the uh, Paris C and two swordfish will allow Birdo to trade. Mm -hmm. To trade simply two bombers away, maybe even the the gladiator and the bombers are not able to get around Sheedon for now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Birdo with a feigned retreat in hand there as well, ready for the right moment. Um, but perhaps the cards he has in hand are a little bit too valuable for him to put down for him to play that quite yet. There are several options for Birdo Burrito. He could play the Type 93, Panzer 35T, killing uh, a bomber with both tanks. And zero operation cost and killing another tank with Sheen. 
but this would allow head to trade beneficial with the remaining unit. So Berto just choose just choosing the Sheen to kill two bombers, and this is what I was concerned about. Mm -hmm. Top deck Sexton! This is a way to deal with Sheen. He can wow. he can pin it down, deal with the front line, and suddenly Head is back into this game. Look at that. Amazing. Uh, and we can kind of see it in Head's uh, face. He doesn't often show very deep emotions, but he does look pretty happy about that one. Choosing one attack or into the front line. This is the question. With Panzer 35T, seeing uh, into the front line is definitely definitely the correct move to protect mm -hmm. that bomber. Berto, however, finding a second Panzer 35T, this means he's not only able to get rid of the unit in the front line, but also the bomber in the support line coming wow. back himself, even dropping the 32nd Infantry Regiment and drawing a verbal wind into uh, this matchup, into the, the air of head. Head, Gladiator, not what he wants. This is not not in buff. Second Parisi, however, is able to take out Sheedon with the, with the pins effect. And Wellington, able to take out Pencil 35T, the first one, not the second one. It's evening out while Head is running completely out of cards. What Bird a back and forth. <laughs> That's crazy. Incredible. Really incredible play from both players here. Um... As you point out, I mean, head now with a completely empty hand. So he's going to have to be relying on that top deck for his options going forward. Maybe not the position that you want to be in right now. You don't want to be in this position because for both player, head is not any options. He's out of cards. Birdo is not able to take out Saxon and Wellington, both. The Wilbelwind is only getting buffed to three and taking out Wellington. Uh, Oh, there's the option. He's he's choosing Panzer 35T plus Type 93 to take out Sexton using his cards to the to the very end. Wow! Getting another top deck here, Kitty Hawk top deck for head. This is not enough. It it's getting pinned by Wirbelwind, but there's no option around. Mm -hmm. uh, taking out the Wirbelwind, taking out the card draw mechanic. So it, it's been incredible watching this this whole game so far as the first signal just has slowly been whittling away at Head's HQ. The Shinyoto Regiment targeting the HQ. Wilbelwind targeting the HQ. Kitty Hawk is banned. Type 94 TK is not enough. He can play it. He can pin the Shinoto Regiment. Maybe trading out the Akita Regiment, but this would be a risk of dying next turn. So Head cannot afford that. Dealing damage to Berto's HQ. Down to 19. This is plenty of time. Berto, top deck Calvary Regiment, not enough. But fight and <laughs> Feigned retreat. <laughs> Feigned retreat. Uh, will close out the game. Head need something. Rough lightning. Will this be enough? Probably not. He he's out of options. He's out of cards. He can see That's it himself. It. Head surrenders in this second match of this series. Birdo 2-0. Incredibly strong start here for Birdo Burrito. J. Acro having the upper hand again against Brit Air. That's a little bit surprising how well J. Acro is dealing with Brit Air today. But yeah, Birdo played this really well and Head did not have the right cards. He was missing a single buff to to kill the Sheen, to, to not die into the ambush effect of uh, off the sheen with those swordfish, uh, or the rough lightning, <laughs> way too late. Turn four, turn mm -hmm. five would be much better to to send the Shiden back to hand. It was back of back and forth with the Sexton top deck, but at the end, the first signal regiment de dealt so many dan damage across the the 10 turns, mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the 11 turns, and closing out the game for Birdo Burrito here. Yeah, uh, definitely a little bit of luck for Birdo Burrito, a little bit of 
perhaps bad luck for Head. Um, and of course, Birdo just again with really uh, great gameplay, making some great moves and knowing exactly the right thing to do at any given moment um, and pulling it through yet again. Incredible. And I'm curious to see, is Birdo able to 3-0 Head uh, yet again uh, and doing a replay of, uh, of yesterday? And we are into the third match and we're about to find out. Birdo Burrito with his uh, Soviet self damage deck Ooh. something is very look at that mulligan two times root out the enemy imagine head playing Z against J aggro of Birdo Burrito mm. would have been a little bit stronger I suppose uh -huh. Uh -huh. but Birdo yesterday was able to beat German Italy in fact with J aggro so uh, maybe Soviet self damage is the is the best matchup for head actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of course soviet self damage considered already by the other caster, ca uh, casters of the best deck so far mm -hmm. but head's german italy <coughs> control deck has a ton of removal to deal with it Berto being able to play three units here all getting killed by sudden strikes. So he's really thinking about it. Sending the T80 into the battle. Mm -hmm. This will be quite some damage. So head is threatened. Probably have to use the sudden strike. And the destruction effect will deal damage to Birdo's HQ, reducing the cost of 34th infantry regiment working in Birdo's favor. Head not falling for it. <coughs> Not reducing the the credits so far. However, this allows Birdo to to attack if he wants to. Head does has one decisive defense, one countermeasure in hand, and Birdo right now considering is is there this countermeasure activated? Is he going to attack into it? Maybe, maybe not. How much? How important is this damage? Uh, he he wants. There's only a single copy of 34th Infantry Regiment. He's preparing for it. Mm -hmm. He's preparing for it. So he goes for it. He he actually plays around it, but not attacking. He's not attacking into it. Very interesting decision here by Birdo. Not wanting to give Head more more units to to make him use his countermeasure, which Head brilliantly faked here mm -hmm. by, by not killing the units. Head gathering up uh, definitely some options in his hand now. Go, goes for root out the enemy. Um, that clears the front line. Uh, I do think the potential damage, yes. But root out could come in handy later uh, so maybe he could hold it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. There are would be worth considering. Right now he's he's having the options to remove the SU with line four day. He has the options of Penta G, what looks much stronger. He can mm -hmm. buff it with Mara Nostrum to start and heal. Uh, building up the board, building up defenses. Burso on the other side, sending a second SU into the battle, dealing five damage already, and is able to send 30, 34th yeah. guards into the battle. Looking really, really strong, really snowballing. Absolutely, lots of strong units out there on the board for uh, for Burdo, who is already um, able to put some damage on Head's uh, HQ. Um, but Head also has a lot of possibilities. Head has a ton of possibilities. I like Sudden Strike, Mary Nostrum, Panther Attack the most, killing both units into the front line. Mm -hmm. Another mm -hmm. option would have been Sudden Strike and Line for Day or Seven's Alpini Regiment. All good possibilities here. I do like this the most because it gave him 7 HP back and this Panther G is now buffed very very good used and he still has a ton of removal to deal with anything critical Birdo is able to play mm -hmm. yeah very strong play here from head um, his HQ looking perfectly perfectly happy um, but Birdo Birdo still has a lot of units here um, and he's able to uh, to push the pressure back he's able to push back Petliakov a bomber really strong actually 
stopping deployment effects like Panzer 3H. Sudden Strike needed to prevent car draw for Berto Burrito and more cast reduction of the 34th Infantry Regiment had also killing this SU with line for a day, saving the Panther G for now. Berto Burrito found a bloody sickle, but it's not able to target the Panther G. So the card effect is not getting able uh, not not being a target for enemy's orders. Mm -hmm. So Berto Burrito is not not really able to use his his abilities and just playing the first rifles drawn by Zukov with blitz into the front line to to try to hold this ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even using bloody sickle now to to get another card, Red Dawn not what he wanted, but this still allows him uh, with a cost reduction to to deploy another unit. Top deck by head here. This is an option to deal with a Petliakov. However, they are two units into the front line, potentially dealing 10 damage. He maybe needs to deal with those first. Wow. But that comet is really going to come in handy. But it's so expensive. It's not worth killing Petliakov with it. Mm. Head needs to deal with the front line. And he will. Lion for a day and Panther G will take out the front line. Birdo, however, still having four units on the field. Again, units going into the front line. Really aggressive mm -hmm. from, from Birdo Burrito here. Sending the second Petliakov and the second T60 into this battle. Admiral Hippo. Actually... I, I love that. Admiral Admiral Hipper on 34th will send back the biggest threat so far and prevent a card draw for Birdo Burrito and he can activate from the deep. So the the most likely unit will getting killed mm -hmm. by by the countermeasure if if Birdo is choosing to play it again. He chooses to play Comet, killing one Petliakov and activating from the deep. Definitely considerable, but still so much damage, yep. 12 damage. Head cannot afford to to just attack again with Comet. He needs to slam down the 7th Alpini yep. Regiment soon. Yeah, absolutely. He needs to uh, get some defense and, 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 and start healing himself back up here. Birdo, thinking about it, he thought about, I could see it in his face, he thought about from the deep, playing Ooh. into it, losing his unit here. Now now is the time for Head to consider playing 7th Alpini Regiment or Admiral Hipper. Maybe even Comet, Comet into Panzer 3H to get a card draw would be credit efficient, but not HP efficient. He's down to 17 and there's 12 damage on field. Mm -hmm. He's he's going for the Mare Nostrum. On the Comet. On the Comet. So this will heal for 5, but it's not very efficient. Floating 3 credits only for this 5 heal... Not efficient, but probably the best he can get. Mm -hmm. It's super difficult seeing seeing those potentials, seeing those dis dif uh, seeing those decisions made. Of mm -hmm. course, had to to heal back a little bit. He's he's really wanting to play Seventh Alpini Bench Regiment and Admiral Hipper. Next turn, he's able to play both, and so far, Comet really helped him to to use credits by while holding his cards by gathering options. Mm -hmm. Rudolph dealing twelve damage there to Head's HQ and Head grabbing that root out. Root out really strong will kill the T eighty, uh, reduce the attack of of the remaining units. I think it's finally time. To, to send back the 6-6 six, six unit. He can't afford taking more damage. So 7th Alpini Regiment, Admiral Hipper it mm -hmm. is. Finally, mm -hmm. he hold on. He dropped very low. Was it too long? We, we need to find out. But 
7 Alpini measurement means a target for Bloody Sickle. Um, another 456th rifle. Red Dawn will deal even more damage traded with this T T80, allowing him to drop the 32nd, uh, 34th guards. A lot of units so far. Absolutely. Um, and I mean. What? I Root out? No, please don't play root out. <laughs> this won't only kills the engineer's battalion, removing three potential damage, but I don't think it's the way right here. Panzer 3H should be the way to, to find the, the research, to find removal. Panzer 3H. Reich Research is able to, with the V1 flying bomb, to kill something. Heinkel is able to get more card draw. Maybe even my Nostrum to, to heal a little, bit, a little bit more. Honestly, had once all of these cards, but I see most potential for the Reich Research to to get the V1 flying bomb while also playing the Panzer 3H. Head is running out of time. Timer is down to 10. He's still thinking. Really He's choosing the, the Heinkel to to just attack and another Reich's research with Ladechima. Ladechima wow. powerful removal. Instead of the Heinkel, I would love to see the V1 flying bomb. Equally three credits, but would have taken out the second rifles or the 456 guards. Had really under pressure fighting second Ladechima, but there's no unit in the support line worth killing it. Mm -hmm. So he just instantly attacked to, to reset the timer, giving him more time. Now considering his actions, trading into the second rifles, good idea with the root out. But he he's playing spoils of war first. Decent options. Wolfpack will get rid of the one left card of Berto, preventing mm -hmm. one, one card war. Uh, Seven's Alpini Regiment, really, really important to, to get more HP to save his HQ. Root out so far, taking out two, no, three yep. units and two of his own. It does feel a little bit like a, a, li a little bit desperate at this point. A uh. little bit desperate, but awesome. Mm -hmm. He removed five units right before Berto Burrito got his Winter Warfare counteroffensive combination. So, Head, head is in a decent posi position actually. Now being able to slam the 7th Alpini Regiment and the Bologna Regiment onto the field. Or even using Comet to kill the unit into the front line. This is a safe play against Berto Burrito. Berto Burrito not looking happy here, finding 33rd Recon with Winter Warfare, potential card draw, but not great. It's a single card draw, he, he needs to find scouting party, so he should just pass, and he will pass. Wow, that is a lot of credits to float. A lot of credits to float. Head sending two units into the front line, 7th Alpini Regiment and 989th Volksgrenadier. Burrito finding Bloody Sickle. This is a card draw opportunity with 33rd Recon. So this is the time to, to actually play it, I believe. Yeah. The best, the best that he's got at the moment, um, the rest of his hand is... Uh, he's not using the 33rd Recon. He's just using the blank Bloody Sickle. A risky play, not going for the card draw here. Mm. Be he, he should have used it on, on the 33rd Recon. He really should have. Now he's going to play the 34th Guards and Winter Warfare on top, going like all in. This was an... With the counter offensive. I see. He's buffing the 33rd Recon, but Head has literally wow. three options to get rid of the buffed 33rd Recon. Burrow went all in to get a big opportunity to trade, oh. but it did not work out. It was the desperate move. Annihilation takes it out. <sighs> Annihilation <laughs> and removing the, the last card of Birdo. He's had now upper hand, sending everything into the front line. However, Birdo is able to trade the 7th Alpini Regiment and letting, letting it live. 
However, had look at that, Ladechima and Tactical Strike being able to take out two remaining units and trading here. Wow! Not even playing Ladechima, allowing him to trade. He's holding those Ladechima. KB1, potential threat, but Head is prefer prepared instant instantly using Ladechima, attacking again. Counteroffensive, not not a good card here, not an opportunity, and U88 will provide even more damage. Birdo, down to 10, top deck, Winter Warfare, able to kill the Volksgrenadier, not using it. Wow. And Wolfpack will close out the game. Head is coming back, winning the Amazing. first match against Birdo Burrito here. And all Birdo can do after looking so strong in the beginning is just watch as Head smashes into his HQ again and again and again and just whittles it down in just a few turns. Incredible, incredible comeback uh, from Head there. It was like he just flipped the switch and turned on beast mode uh, at the end and, and wiped uh, wiped Birdo out. Yeah, his, his German Italy deck is really, really strong against the lineup of Birdo. Did not work out yesterday, but finally he had confidence, he, he had the energy and the focus to play it against Birdo and finally taking a victory out of this. He but got out of his head, like <laughs> we talked about. <laughs> he so got Birdo out of his head, that's true. <laughs> so 2-1 now, uh, Birdo leading by one. Um, what what do you think uh, Head is going to be choosing to bring in next to face Birdo Soviet self-damage? J Acro or Air. Because well. these are the remaining. <laughs> well, yes, but which which of these two would you uh, would you pick? Air, air mm -hmm. is much stronger mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. into self damage. It's a much better matchup, and I think it's 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 necessary for head to to get to get a better matchup right now mm -hmm. to get back into the series and closing it out mm -hmm. uh, more more likely. And yeah, he's he's choosing air. And Birdo, Birdo knows the matchup is not great for him. But of course, anything can happen. Heads Mulligan here containing Convoy. I, I would keep Convoy, honestly, and getting more options mm -hmm. against Birdo. Not the strongest Mulligan here um, head. from Head. At Head, turn one, playing the TK, this allows Birdo to play Bloody Sickle and reducing the cost of 34 guards here. I strongly disagree with Head, he could have mm -hmm. just floated. It's a valid tactic to, to float the first three turns against self-damage. Well, Head found a convoy, he found the card draw, and this is a very good turn for him, three credits used, but nobody's delivered for potential Red Dawn or Winter Warfare. So, Scouting Party is being played and T80 is already dealing damage. Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk is, is nice, but I'm, I'm a little bit unsure about the options here for head. Yeah, he has he has a lot of cards in hand. Um, but what is the optimal way for him to play them? Um, Birdo, on the other hand, uh, already looking like he's um, starting to develop something on on uh, on his side of the board. Birdo is having a massive opportunity next turn, uh, and had able to play the Kitty Hawk, but he has to kill the T60, and this will reduce the the cost of 34 guards again. So this is not a great opportunity, actually. He cannot play the bombers on them own, Be so the only real option is like playing Kitty Hawk and Swordfish, but after Bloody Sickle, this is the second damage to the HQ, and 34 guards are down, down to two. The third, Burrow Breacher is having three Winter Warfares and three eight, uh, 456 Rifle Regiments with the 33rd Weekends on board. So Winter Warfare is being played 
and he does not has to play the second one. He he can send a 30 third weaken into the front line and slamming the guards onto the ground. Mm. Solid. Very, very solid. Rough lightning. It's it's a really strong it's a really strong top deck here. This will send back uh the the guards, but Head is choosing to to attack and kill kill the rifle regiment and trading preparing with Sonya to to pin and kill the the 34 guards a little bit risky play but last turn Birdo did not use uh, Red Dawn or something to kill the bombers so this is very good usage of of those three airplanes and close air support mm -hmm. to to deliver a board Birdo under a lot of pressure here mm -hmm. But Birdo's hand is uh, is looking pretty busy right now. Um, what are his options right now? His his options are not good enough. He he can't really develop a board. He can't blitz out units. He can't kill those bombers, which is mo most important. Uh, the only option to do that is like playing three time uh, two times winter warfare and a bloody sickle to kill the Sonya. And maybe sending the 34 guards into the front line or playing an 456th uh, onto the battlefield to, to buff them. 33rd weaken, actually decent. Now he will gain a lot of card draw out of those desperate winter warfares. Finding another bloody sickle and a red dawn. This is so great. He's able to kill both bombers, which is so much needed. This card draw was super super strong for Birdo here mm -hmm. but again he's going down to 10 and lost a lot of removals in the process so head is having the options using the rough lightning uh, sending back to hand the 34th guards or using just the kitty hawk gladiator and finest hour to to deal five damage to Birdo. Burrow's HQ down to five. Wow. Red Dawn being able to deal with something, but he he can't really choose the the credit efficient option. He's down so low. But he has to do something. It's incredible. He's choosing he's choosing the the option of winter warfare and two cards and another card draw this won't kill this won't kill any airplane now here and Birdo is playing very risky he is and he does not have a lot of uh, wiggle room here just looking at his HQ um, head uh, in, a, in a pretty strong position in a strong position it's it's not not a breaking not, not a really good position there's an option like playing rough lightning and sending back the 34th guards uh, i think there's a 50 50 chance uh, this this retreat could open up the hq if if the 34th guards is sending between hq and guard which allows head to deal more damage the other option is pl just playing land lease, looking for bombers, looking for for empire strikes, looking for more damage. No, it's it's not opening up the HQ. So Kitty Hawk is getting used to kill the first guards. Birdo Burrito found another Red Dawn, another opportunity to to play as removal. Maybe it's better to to choose from the people. However, he could play the 30 uh, the 456 rifle regiment going down to one which would open him to to be dead from anything mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. empire strikes so i i guess we are seeing from the people here some some potentially risky plays but i mean birdo you know he seems to be fast running out of options goes for from the people um like you mentioned from the people killing uh, the gladiator, 
hovering over the T-80s, this will be potential to damage. With a single bomber and Empire Strikes, he will be dead. This is a risky option. So Birdo really thinking hard about the T-80. But I don't see a lot of other options. He needs to find something to close out the game. And Tank is able to, to attack next turn. Had finding uh, naval support, the buff card, not what he wanted, not what he needed. Now it's getting close for head. Mm. He he needs to get options. Land lease being placed. Monty. Monty will pin down everything and give him another card draw. Not what Birdo was looking for. And he got the Swordfish and Empire Strikes. Wow. Birdo Burrito. He's out of options for the counteroffensive. There's no winter warfare to, to blitz out that Shinoto regiment. And... What what are what are the op potential he? I don't see anything what could save him right now. No. He can play the Shinoto regiment, buff it with counter offensive, kill the rough lightning. But head has so many options and lethal options, of course. Guards won't help him as well. Scouting party could give him more card draw but again this will take a lot of credits Petlyakov could block things he will just slam units onto the field hoping he will survive head has lethal empire strikes and the swordfish is enough or finest hour and swordfish and the the buff card is enough or several options he will just attack. there we go head taking the second win against birdo burrito and we are gonna go into game five here this is definitely not a replay of what we saw yesterday um, no head head is definitely showing uh that he is uh definitely capable um and in and incredibly skilled at piloting these decks your head came back. I like to say it like that. And I, I believe Head could have played like this. I, this is the rematch. The same bands, the same decks, the same World Championship, day two. And it's completely different compared to yesterday. Yeah. It's really interesting to also think about that mental game, you know, think about, you know, I mean, day one, maybe you've got some day one jitters in there, you know, you're not kind of sure about yourself, head getting in his head um, and 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 just uh, not able to play those decks to the best of his abilities. Of course, maybe a little bit of luck always uh, involved, whether it's in Birdo's favor or, or not in heads, but now we're really seeing things uh, shift around and 2-2 and, and, two, two, and this next game is going to determine who is going to face off uh, against J. King in the finals. This is the final match of, of the bronze match, actually. The loser of this match is out and is third place. Definitely nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely. It's a great achievement, but the winner will live on. And the winner will be able to, to play in the grand final against the current world champion. What a match. Head has his legions and Birdo Burrito has his self-damage deck list. So the mulligan of Head looks awesome. He has the 30... 32nd infantry regiment i mentioned before he he maybe should not play this turn one to to not allow birdo burrito playing bloody sickle and getting the snowball running so actually the ramp is much better well however red does not care at all head is playing this little unit getting bloody sickled however birdo is non having non 34s in uh, guards. So this self damage right now did did not do anything in synergy. The war machine turn two with head going first will give him so yeah. much momentum, so much more credits. Birdo not looking happy about this. Absolutely. Also, also he found the first thirty fourth guards very necessary to come back here. 
but ahead is looking like he's gonna have a great next turn as well. He's already found the Sky Train, uh, so he might be able to uh, to start just printing units. Sky Train and Uprising, both good options. But Rito trying to put up some power play, some pressure with a T80 zero operation costs tank. Of course, it's looking a little bit dangerous. However, Head is having several options. He could use the the uprising, just sending it back to hand. He could use the Sky Train uh, to and and play 32nd Infantry Regiment. Maybe just flooding the board. It could be a little bit dangerous against the removals and like Winter Warfare. But Head is just going for it and playing into potential Winter Warfare here. Wow. Burrito Burrito finding a counter-offensive, powerful card with a T80, but not having Winter Warfare is, is not good enough. So there are some options here. I Right now I'm looking at Padliakov, looking, looking good. Uh, also the 456th Rifle Regiment with Red Dawn taking out the Pearl and uh, getting buffed by that while the T80 is able to deal damage into the front into the the HQ, definitely a nice option here. Burrow could also just play the scouting party to to trade into the 32nd Infantry Regiment. So many options for him. Pedliakov it is blocking potential deployment effects like Sherman, like half track. Like like a lot of units in, in this US frontline mechanics. So head has to trade here, killing killing the T eighty, reducing the cost of the thirty four guards. However, he's not able to 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 reach the Padliakov and the underground state maybe the only option to deal with it right now. He's choosing the Sky Train. Printing out some units, sending a unit into the front. Birdo has to react to it and attack with with Petliakov and kill it, or maybe just playing first rifles, being very careful. I don't know if Birdo can afford that actually. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and I mean, it's looking like he um. He's he's choosing card yeah. Zukov, four hundred fifty-six rifle regiment. With Blitz, definitely a nice option, but not the option he wants here. He's choosing the one without Blitz, without buff, and probably uh, Red Dawn in combination. Or he could attack with Padliakov using Red Dawn to kill the Pearl. Not that great, though, because there's... there's a little bit wasted self damage here. Mm -hmm. He's running out of time making this decision. This is a this is a tough one, and this is the high stakes. Attacking with Petliakov, taking out the Pur. I think this is the right decision. Taking out two units and preparing, and yeah, using the bomber. The bomber is not trading, and just attacking, killing a unit is very efficient. So that overall definitely good play. However, the California Regiment is unchecked without the Red Dawn. Head going for it, sending California Regiment into the front line. Burrow Burrito right now not having not having any removal available. Not even card war available. No winter warfare. So what are what are the, his options? He can drop guards like the f the first rifles but it's not looking good no. actually for Birdo. He doesn't look very happy about it. <laughs> Just look at that. I mean, he is, you know, w Soviet self damage being one of his strongest decks, you know, something that he is so familiar and so comfortable with. Um having these options is uh, is definitely not what he uh what he wants to to have i i could call for for a desperate move here so the force and red banner to but but this is against uh against underground state also not good enough 
So he plays as a scouting party. He knows he he needs card draw desperately. Attacking with Petliakov into the California Regiment to, to try to, to get this unit down. He's running so low on HP if this unit chooses to attack the HQ. And of course, losing Petliakov hurts very, very much. I think from all the options Birdo had, this was the best because he's going to get card raw. Strategic bombing will not only kill all of these units and deliver total 8 damage with California Regiments, wow. but at least it is card raw. At least it is card raw and Birdo is able to find the Red Dawn. This is an option to kill California Regiment. Heavily needed here. He, he needs to, to set up protection as well. This is the 456 Rifle Regiment. It has Blitz. Winter Warfare killing two units. Which one is getting buffed? Is this, It's the Skytrain. Would be better on the California Regiment to eliminate this buff, but Birdo has to do it. He has to take three more damage, sending this guard into the front line. And it's so close. It is so close. Just two HP left on uh, on Birdo's HQ there. Um, His options looking a little bit limited, but then again, he was able to clear a lot from uh, from Head's board there. Look, it said the Sky Train is attacking wow. Birdo down to one. This one plus one plus one buff was random, and it got the worst possible option for Birdo here. Head is going plan west. Two guards, two legion units will protect the Sky Train and keeping it alive. Birdo Burrito, he, he's running out of guards, actually. There is one retreat in Head's hand, the, the underground state. Birdo Burrito does not have intel on that. But this means he needs two guards protecting his HQ to not die against this 1-4 Skytrain. What a crazy wow. match. Wow. And what a way that would be for uh, for this to end. I mean, and, and but with only one HP left, even if it's not the Skytrain. Birdo, Birdo is having the option to get those units. He's thinking about it. First rifle is one guard and Red Banner is delivering a guaranteed second guard. He's not choosing to. He's not choosing to to upgrade this. So there is the opportunity for head. Underground State sending back to hand the first rifle and finishing Birdo Burrito. Oh. Striking back and going into the grand final to With fight against train. Jade King. Birdo Burrito eliminated out of this world championship. He can't get the revenge with J King in the final. J Birdo Rito right now so disappointed, but again he's reached rank 3 in the World Championship. He will get $1,500 and it is a great achievement. I don't say this because I reached it two years ago. I say it because it's, it's really true. It, he started as casual player, as friend and made it to the World Championship Great achievement, congratulations, Bird of Redo. I know it will hurt and take it takes a lot of time to get over it, but best wishes to you and best wishes and congratulations to Head. He will get the opportunity to fight against J King, like he mentioned in the play interview, yes. and is able to take out J King and preventing him making cards history. And of course, Jay King's able to do history and getting the second world championship title in a row. This what is going to be what a day! This is going to be such an exciting final matchup that we're about to see. And massive congratulations to Head for that win. And of course, Berto Burrito, he has shown not just through this matchup, but throughout yesterday and the matches that we've seen him playing uh, previously. What an incredibly talented, uh, skilled player he is. Um, Really, really, really well done uh, throughout. And what a final series going all five games. I believe this is the first uh, series in this World Championship that we are seeing going all five games. Um, so it, it, 
as I say, incredibly well done uh, from both players. And of course, ending in third place in the World Championship uh, is, is, is definitely huge proof um, of Birdo's uh, amazing skill and talent but looking forward uh to this final matchup between j king seven reigning world champion and head who is gonna be the cards 2022 world champion we are gonna kick it back over to christo and the analyst desk to find out there you have it we have a grand finals. We have J King versus Head to take home the title of 2022 Cards World Champion. Berto Burrito eliminated in third place, taking home 1,500 US dollars. Spoos, I mean, you and Ollie both thought Berto was going to be the one to make it back to the finals to take on J King, and it looked good. It Head coming back good. with the reverse sweep. What happened there? We saw Birdo struggling with that Soviet deck that has been banned most of the tournament, being one of the strongest decks in cards at the moment. Yeah, and also I think it is one of his favorite decks to play at the moment. Um, he should have felt really confident. And yeah, maybe we just saw that it was a mistake banning it all the time before, because we just saw it has a lot of weaknesses, especially against air, especially what was the first matchup against, also against the German Italy deck, it did not perform too well. And yeah, really surprising kind of for Head just turning that game around after being behind 2-0. But yeah, congrats for, to him for being in our second finalist today. Absolutely, that's a heck of a turnaround against somebody that's as strong a player as Birdo is. What do you think equated to the difference? We saw this matchup yesterday, we saw Burrito, Birdo Burrito go 3-0, and now we come back and see Head manage to, to turn it around and win. What kind of stood out to you as the difference between yesterday's series and today? So it, it also just came down to the correct cards and heads hand at the correct time, like we saw in that matchup German Italy versus the Soviet Japan one. He had the, the line for a day in hand, he found the Ladeshima later on to give Birdo Burrito no chance to find any comeback chances there, controlling the battle. I think he played something a little bit different than I would have played it, but in the end, doesn't matter, it worked out for him and he's in the finals. I got the impression watching head play that he was almost playing a little bit more passive, a little slower, letting Birdo come to him and really manipulating the game to have you know more control over the situations and really making the optimal plays and setting himself upright. Do you, do you think he maybe went back, took a look at some of the gameplay yesterday and said, hey, I need to rework how I'm approaching this whole series uh, to be able to go ahead and, and, and win that matchup? I mean, that's absolutely possible. Like, we cannot say it for sure, but I think as a player at, the, at this level of, of player, you, you definitely recap your, your matches. If you're not watching them, just go over them in your head and just look, what could have gone differently? What could, did go into that direction when I do this? Maybe I do it next time, that, uh, this time. And yeah, overall, I think he, he learned from yesterday and this might be one reason why he's in the finals today. Absolutely, so we've got Head versus J King coming up in our finals. In just a few moments, any initial thoughts now? You know, Head did just beat very similar lineup to what J-King is bringing. Uh, do you think that gives him some momentum now going into this final matchup here? I mean, at least, he, at least he knows what to experience from the series. So I think he already knows what to ban from J-King because they're having the same lineup that, that Birdo is just having. And yeah, I think he's, he kind of regained the momentum with beating Bamboo. Now he beat Birdo Burrito, and I think he's definitely ready to, to take on J-King here. And now if you're J-King, are you sitting back watching that series going, oh boy, okay, I see how that went. Maybe I need to think about how I approach this, knowing that, you know, Head might come in looking to maybe exploit my, my Soviet self-damage deck, just like he did to Birdo. Yeah, it, it, it's, I mean, if you are in J-King's position here and see that had just beat someone who's bringing the similar lineup than you bring with slight differentials, but um, mostly the same lineup. It can get in your head quickly, but I think J King is just experienced enough and knows the matchups, knows the, the archetypes and how to approach each um, matchup that we might just see. So I think he's still confident, but maybe there's that one, two percent that he's a little bit disconfident and now so 
maybe it makes a difference in the end. We will find out, I guess. Absolutely. And like we talked about it earlier, you know, this isn't about one, any one series going on today. These players have prepared yeah. probably hundreds of games knowing what matchups they need to see. So just because something happened in a, in a different series that Jay King didn't even participate in, probably not going to change his game plan now, but it definitely gives them some insight into how Head is looking to go ahead and, you know, try and take advantage of that lineup. So uh, speaking of Head, I just got word that Ollie is set up to go ahead and interview him to find out what he's thinking now going into this matchup against Jay King in the finals. Hello, Head, and congratulations on qualifying for the grand finals. It looks like your dream will come true and you will have another chance to fight against uh, Jay King. Uh, what did, did you think of that series? Uh, what was the hardest game for you? Uh, first of all, uh, the most hard thing is about my hand at first in every match is so bad <laughs> <laughs> and my team finally is coming back <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know what to say uh, okay so uh you were down two games you'd lost two games uh, and then you you came back. Uh, did you think uh, did you think you know you would be able to make the comeback? Were you were you uh, confident that you could still win, or or did it take you as a surprise that you uh, won three games in a row? Uh, I don't I don't think too much. Uh, everybody uh, hates to lose, of course, uh, but I hate me. To do not to do not well more than just lose the game. Uh, I think the third, the fourth, and the fifth one, uh, I do my best. Uh, therefore, uh, it's okay for me. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So after the break that we are about to go to uh, in a little bit. You will be playing uh, best out of five for the chance to become a world champion of cards. Uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, and are you excited or nervous? How do you feel? Mm. <laughs> I don't think it's before anymore. Uh, yeah, Jim is that Jim. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, again, like I gave you an opportunity for uh, yesterday um, in your native language, uh, if you want to 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 share some thoughts, uh, uh, go ahead. Hmm. Under this ball, then so. Ah. 人生。Awesome. Thank you very much and congratulations, Head. I can't wait to see you compete against Jay King for the Cards 2022 World Championship. But for now, we'll pass it back over to Crystal. Thank you. There you have it. So we've got Head going one-on-one -on -one with J King in the grand finals of the 2022 Cards World Championships. Head gets that chance to get, you know, some revenge after being knocked down to the bottom bracket, has made his way through, knocked out Bamboo, knocked out Birdo, and has now made it to the grand finals. Oli, you know, what, what happened in that last series? I want to get your take on it because Birdo, had 3 0 head before, comes out 2 0 lead. Even that game three was kind of going back and forth. We thought there's a possibility that Birdo just makes it right back, and that turned out to not be the case. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> Actually, I, I think if, if it, I it can was, just yeah, answer that question, ahead. I think turn, turn, or the match three was kind of the turning point of the whole season. I mean, sure, mm -hmm. if Birdo would have won, it would have been over. But I think that one situation where Birdo maybe 
kept that or let that pen to G with a Mar Nostrum on it for one or two turns too long on the board, just providing had just it, it was I think in the end it was just it's six 14. six health left on yeah. Hats HQ. And if that would have been one less Mar Nostrum healing. So it would have been lethal at this point. So maybe that was one slight mistake, and maybe Birdo even realized in hindsight that mm -hmm. this was a slight mistake there, and it sticked in his head. Sure, you also, in the, the following matches, you got a little bit unfortunate with his, you did not find the cards at the correct time, no winter warfare when he had the counter offenses, stuff like that. But at the end, I think this was the turning point of the series, and it just gave head the momentum there, and he turned the game or the match around. I mean, it was definitely that match that um, I feel like Birdo had the best chance of just closing it out. Um, it felt like he was definitely not getting the cards in the in the in the matches to follow. Uh, I even like wrote down on my paper uh, for that last match. I was like, "Head got a good mulligan, Birdo didn't." <laughs> right, uh, and that that was the the theme of that last match. It was really difficult for him to get back into that and and properly you know execute on his game plan. Um, he in, in earlier matches he had had to expend all of his uh, winter warfares before he found the counteroffensive. Uh, there, there was just a lot of awkward draws that that came in for for Berto there. With that being said, had just played well. He played his decks in the way he he, he should play it. Um, I don't see like I uh, didn't see like a ton of tactical mistakes, uh, which is is slightly. Like strange, because Head normally makes a couple of misplays and kind of, or, or at least strange decisions. I'm not gonna jump up here and call them misplays. Um, it, it, roughly every match or so. Uh, so, yeah, it was a it was a combination of of two things. I think it was both Bruno not finding the draws that he needed and Head just playing exceptionally well for those matches. And if he's able to keep up that level of play, I mean, we we, we saw in the interview, right? Yes, English is not his first language, and we're we're you know thankful that he even attempts to to let me interview him in English. But uh, even when I asked him to share some thoughts in his native language, um, you know, he he seemed to be emotionally involved in the situation, right? Like the importance of this is is not lost on him. He didn't have really the words to describe how he was feeling, and 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 I think that says a lot about you know how he feels now. Back to the psychology side of things, right? Yes. You just <laughs> peaked, right? Now you're going on to a break, and then you're going to be playing the the, the world finals, right? Is he going to be uh, in, in like a, an adrenaline dump situation when he goes into that, or is he going to maintain that level of intensity into the finals? That's the big question. J King has has so far been like, okay, you know, I'm just chilling, uh, I'm just chilling, <laughs> but now. He's not facing Birdo, and he was probably expecting to be facing Birdo, given how yesterday played out. So uh, maybe J King is like, oh, whoa, whoa, now I need to readjust how I'm thinking. It's, it's, it's all up in the air. It's, uh, this is an upset, right? Like, it's truly an upset. You, and you heard, you know, during the interview, had even say, game four and game five were probably my, my best games so far. So like you said, he's coming on a high. Maybe he carries that momentum right into the finals while J King's, he's sitting back, he's got his feet up, he's relaxing. Though J King has said that, hey, I'm, I'm pretty cool, calm, and collected this mm -hmm. tournament. I feel really good. I feel quite prepared. So, you know, that's kind of J King's mojo right now. That's how he's feeling and that's how he's acting. So, let's bring up the bracket and take a look uh, before we get into our final matchup here. But uh, there, there you've got the paths to the finals for both J King and Head. Uh, you know, J King taking out Bamboo 3 0, taking out Birdo 3 1. J King's only lost one match so far this tournament. Meanwhile, uh, you've got Head losing to Birdo, going to the bottom bracket, defeating Bamboo, getting revenge on Birdo, and making it to the final. So we got $5,000 on the line, the title of world champion in this next matchup. Uh, Ali Spoos, you're going to be casting it in, uh, in just a few moments. So I want to keep this short so we can get kind of into the game, but um, quick prediction, Spoos, let's start with you. Oh, that's hard to say. I mean, if it would be yesterday, after the performance yesterday, I would say 100% J-King. But Head came back strongly, and I think he's definitely an opponent that can take it on with, with J-King. And I think it will be a close 3-2, but I think I still go for J-King. Yeah, I, I, I kind of have to agree. Uh, I, think, um, I think it's going to be 3-2. Uh, I, think, I think Head has felt his mojo. I think he's going to put uh, Jaking into a couple of uncomfortable positions, uh, but I think <clears throat> I think preparation and uh, and determination will uh, win out in the end. With that being said, like there's there's no room for mistakes. No. 
there's there's no margin for error, right? There is there's not a single misplay that can't be 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 done uh, on on either player's behalf here. And that's where you talk about preparation, jaking, having prepared, put all that time and effort in. That just decreases your chances of making one of those errors. Where, if you look on the other side, had like you mentioned, maybe made some unorthodox plays up until this point, but you know, if he's looking to take advantage, for example, of jaking Soviet deck like he did to Birdos and, and go 3-0 against it, one slip up in that game three, one different play by Birdo, and all of a sudden that's a different series. So it really is going to come down to the fine details. We had a great day of cards yesterday, but three 3 O's are not exactly how you expect the World Championship to start. But nope. today we have had a whole lot of amazing cards pl gameplay, and, and I'm excited for this finals. We're going to have it coming to you in just a few moments. Spooz and Oli will be casting that. Before we get there, we have another little short interview for you. Uh, Aileen is going to be chatting with Gume about the year to come and what to expect from cards, and right after that, we're going to get into the grand finals. Hello everyone, we hope you're enjoying the CARDS 2022 World Championship Grand Finals as our top four players duke it out to try and win the title of CARDS World Champion and their share of the $10,000 prize pool. Um, but we're going to take a short break from that now. I am Elin, Community Manager at CARDS and sitting with me here is Gümete Kristiansson. Chief Creative Officer and Founder of Cards. And we're going to take a moment to talk about the upcoming year in Cards and what's on the horizon, because it's a very exciting year ahead, isn't it, Gourmet? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, of course, we, we always feel that the, that the year that is coming is the most uh, exciting year yet. Uh, but I definitely, I, I, I think we can be honest that, uh, that uh, this will be a really big year for us with mobile coming out and, and all that. Yes, it's going to be an incredibly exciting year ahead. And to start off with, I would like to take a moment to kind of look at the esports that we have coming up uh, in the next year. We, of course, will be kicking off the year with uh, our traditional uh, January Officer Club Championship. We will continue to have open tournaments uh, throughout the year as well. But we may see some changes to some of the formats that we're doing. Um, and so I advise our players to stay tuned for that. Um, we will have more information for you on that front uh, soon. Um, and I also want to highlight a little bit something that I've been working on, which is the Community Contributor Program. We, of course, have the Cards Contributor Program um, active, which is something that um, maybe hasn't gotten uh, a ton of attention uh, in the last few months and something that I've sort of taken up and have been rejuvenating and we're going to be relaunching this program in 2023 uh, with a little bit, a little bit expanded uh, with some new exciting things and I'm so excited to share more details about all of you with that um, in the new year. Of course, we've had a lot of skirmishes uh, in 2022, and these skirmishes should be continuing into 2023 with new formats, with new cards as prizes. Um, and then, of course, as you mentioned uh, earlier, the big thing, cards mobile, new UI, so many new things going on. Can you take us a little bit through this, Gumi? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely th that is, uh, 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 those are the, the, the big, big things we've been working on and, and it's really exciting to be uh, getting closer to the f some sort of finish line. Of course, we will keep iterating on it and, and in, in, in this kind of game development, there is no, there is never any real finish line, but uh, to get it out there uh, and, and I think we are uh, getting closer to that. We haven't set any uh, official release date or anything like that. And the release of mobile will probably be pretty gradual. Uh, we will start uh, um, 
you know maybe we'll run uh, an additional beta phase or, or and then go into some uh, soft release and then and, and the early access and all that in but it will be a gradual step by step uh, process but uh, players can expect to to uh, most players will probably have access uh, to some to to the mobile game in in some form uh, pretty soon in in the uh, new year Absolutely, incredibly exciting. And so tying into that, into the Cards Mobile is of course the new UI, which we did discuss uh, a bit yesterday. Perhaps you could take us through some of the highlights of this uh, again and remind our players uh, uh, of what's up ahead. Yeah, we can definitely dive into that again. So, so uh, 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 right, right at the uh, at the home screen in uh, 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 you will see that that. Uh, the whole UI has uh, had the, uh, a very big face lift is completely different from the current current uh, layout and you can see at the top we have the, the the top bar which is a persistent bar which is uh, stays there uh, regardless of what what uh, part of the UI you are in and uh, the same can be said for the uh, uh, main menu which are the three buttons on the left the play button cards and the shop uh, they remain the same, uh, mostly regardless of, of where you go within the UI. Uh, and then in the center we have the carousel, the content carousel, uh, which can host uh, various contents, uh, anything that we kind of want to uh, push in front of the eyes of our players. It can be news about the new expansion or anything game related. It can be, uh, uh, you know, the World Championship might be featured in there, uh, news about uh, a new feature or a release or, 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 or even, you know, offers in the store or, or whatnot. And then below the carousel, you have the, uh, the progression part. Uh, here I have a new account, so it's the, the login rewards. Uh, but after you have completed the login rewards, uh, this part is replaced with the uh, national progression. And, and you will have access to uh, see, uh, it, it will show you by default uh, uh, the nation that you were playing last, but you can also switch between if you want the nations, and it will show you where you are in the national progression at what level what next uh, what are the next levels uh, and you can claim the 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 prices also directly the rewards uh, from there and then on the right side of the council you have uh, uh, these uh, um, content uh, um, tabs or, or buttons and they can also uh, be flexible uh, so uh, at some point you might have like you know the world championship or uh, or uh, draft or, or skirmish uh, these might, might be shortcuts to, to those kinds of things but again you know that, that 
that's like with the carousel we we it is uh, flexible when it comes to the content so that uh, we have a lot of space to use uh, in, in the new UI uh, for anything that we kind of feel is most important for, for players to have access to at any time. And, and then finally in the lower left, uh, lower right corner you have the missions tab uh, and that's still a bit of a design in uh, process, uh, in progress. And uh, oh, you know, it's a bit And then last uh, in the bottom right corner, you have there a, a, a tab for missions. And uh, this is still work in progress. Uh, design is not completed, but uh, ideally, I would like that that you could, that as a player, you could see. Uh, where you are in the missions, you know, if you've completed, you know, three steps of, of or two steps of, of three and, and maybe, you know, see what rewards you're going to get. And then you could click it to get more info on, on exactly what the missions are, but uh, it would give you some useful, meaningful info right without clicking it. Okay. Uh, Já, spurning hvort að við hendumst örstutt í dekkbildirinn Já, já, mjög... ok uh, Ég kannski aðeins tekið þetta toppari líka mm -hmm. Bara Alright, so uh, with the toppar uh, something we noticed uh, in the beta that we were just running not everyone realized that uh, maybe we, we need to tweak the design a little bit to, to highlight this but if you go somewhere here like in, into the play menu you can always press the cards logo here uh, in the top bar and that is actually a home button so it will always return you to the home screen. Uh, same goes for here the name and the rank icon you can also, also click those and that will bring you to the uh, profile. This is very much uh, design in progress still so don't worry too much about that but you will have access to your ranks and national progression here uh, customizing your equipment and card box and stuff and uh, the officer club etc uh, below uh, yeah and then then in the top bar you have the resources and the, the settings as well uh, but if we go here into the main menu then first you have the play button which gives you the the, the play menu here you have access to the different uh, game modes uh, like battle and training, draft, the campaigns, etc. And uh, here you can scroll through all your decks and then uh, you go into play. And the good thing with uh, maybe the, the most nice to have thing here is that uh, when you're playing uh, at the end of a game you will be brought back to this page, uh, this screen, not to the to the home screen, and the deck will still be selected that you were just playing. So if you want to play another game, uh, you just press the play button, and off you go. You are uh, back in action, uh, as opposed to a na in the UI like it is now. You actually uh, go back to home screen. You have to pr push battle again, and then maybe you know uh, go through a couple of pages to find the deck and select it again. And yeah, it's a bit tedious. So this would be nice to have. Um, then if we go on the cards, this is of course a, a quite a major change. Uh, here you can uh, browse through your decks, but maybe, and, and then uh, open packs and the collection. But maybe the biggest thing here is that if you go into the deck and if you it will create a new deck, you enter the new deck builder, which is uh, completely differently laid out uh, and this uh, uh, probably quite familiar for, for players that have played uh, any of the other uh, popular CCGs out there. This is more in line with with uh, how the others are doing. But I mean the definite the, the main kind of uh, objective for us was uh, uh, to give players better access to, to see a bigger part of the uh, yeah, I'll 
kannski keywordin hérna, þú veist, accessibility, quality of life, svona. Já, já, já. Já. Alright, so if we go here into more of these decks, uh, then you're into the deck builder. And this is probably the, the, the biggest change when it comes to quality of life and, and uh, for, new, for, for players. Uh, and it is a quite big change from the current deck builder. Um, the main objective for us was maybe to, to give players a better uh, overview of the deck when they are building a deck. Uh, so you see a bigger part of the deck here in the panel here on the right side. Uh, and then you just uh, drag, drag the cards here uh, between the collection part and the deck part. And uh, but of course with the mobile uh, we have there's more limited space, so uh, you don't have access to to all the filters here directly from the front. Uh, so in the top bar here you have a filters uh, button. And then the, the panel here on the right is replaced uh, or gets uh, populated with uh, various filters. So we are quite hopeful that, that this will uh, be a uh, popular change eventually, but it's still of course work in progress and we need to streamline it a bit. And of course, we have some big changes up ahead for the in-game shop as well, which are still in progress and being designed. Yeah, I think that is something we'll probably not go into at this point uh, because it, it, the shop is, is about to change drastically. And of course, uh, there as well, we are, we are uh, aiming at, at uh, making making uh, the lives of, of players a little bit easier. Uh, I mean, the current shop is it's getting very bloated and a bit uh, difficult to, to navigate through uh, and to kind of figure out what is what and, 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 and what you should buy. Of course. And um, yeah, and then maybe finally, uh, there are some changes also, some UI changes in the battle scene itself, where you're also actually playing cards, which is of course the, the most interesting part. Uh, there we are not completely revamping anything, uh, but there are definitely some, some uh, adjustments we are doing. And they are mainly uh, uh, and they are mainly uh, revolve around you know fitting the game into the small screen of mobile. And probably the, 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 the biggest change that players will notice is that, for example, here on this uh, pack 36, it has a trigger ability. And you can see here that the uh, uh, trigger icon is uh, here on the right side of the card instead of being underneath the card. So this will apply to all the, the state uh, and keyword abilities and uh, and they will be uh, laid out like that. And that is, of course, because we have uh, different challenges when it comes to, to the limited space on mobile than on desktop. But I think uh, in general, uh, this is a kind of a change we like uh, in general also, because the, the icons like they were on the desktop were a little bit often hard to read and uh, we will be uh, reflecting this on, on desktop as well, eventually. Absolutely. So some really big and exciting changes ahead for cards. Um, and this, of course, is something that we're going to be seeing both on the mobile version and on the desktop version as well. The game, of course, will be cross-play. We will have account linking um, so that you can play no matter where you are, um, at any time with players that are either on mobile or on the desktop versions. Yeah, definitely. But then moving a little bit away from the mobile version of the game, uh, we also have some exciting things uh, up ahead uh, in 2023, 
uh, in terms of some new big expansions. Now, our current roadmap lists that we have one big spring expansion planned, uh, but we're happy to reveal here today that we're actually planning two big expansions for next year, right, Gumi? Yeah, that's actually super exciting, and and it will be very uh, it will be fun to to get back a little bit to that after after we get the game out on mobile and and uh, finish this you know the bulk of the UI work to get a little bit back into the into the basics you know working on uh, new mechanics new cards and and uh, start uh, adding more content to the game uh, again I mean we've been doing it but. A a little bit on the light side. Uh, definitely, we have uh, we're gonna have the spring expansion, which is gonna be a, a big expansion. I mean, closer to the uh, earlier big big expansions that we have than 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 these small releases. And uh, then we are planning also a winter expansion, and we are uh, definitely uh, we have decided on the on the themes which these uh, expansions revolve around. And we are very excited uh, about them, and we're already working on a lot of the cards and and you know uh, the artwork and 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 all this stuff, and uh, that is really exciting. And, and of course, maybe the the big thing here is also that we want to get back into a rhythm, you know, with uh, coming out with two big expansions per year, and they will be uh, and and then smaller uh, releases in between. But that they will also be, it's been a little bit all over the place because we've been doing so many things. But now we really want to get into a, a, a predictable release uh, cycle, uh, which is also um, greatly beneficial for, for our players just to know a little bit what to expect and, and, and kind of when the beats are in our releases. So that is, uh, yeah, super exciting. And maybe to add to that, we are also looking into uh, doing pretty big changes to uh, the set structure uh, and, and uh, the, which ties into this release cycle and uh, we have like uh, close to 800 cards now in the game and uh, at some point uh, we need to start uh, phasing out some cards uh, because it, it, you know you can't just keep adding cards to a CCG because it becomes uh, you know if you have thousands of cards it's impossible to to uh, balance and, and and so forth uh, so we will probably start uh, uh, yeah we will introduce the system later on that we are working on but it will we, we will retire cards for a while and then they might come back into play later when we are coming out with these big expansions, probably, you know, some set of the older cards will go out and that will, of course, also shake up the meta and we will give certain concepts maybe in the game a little bit of a rest and then they might be reintroduced later on and so on. So that, that, that's something we are uh, also quite excited uh, to share with you guys. Of course, it's a big change and, and we will definitely uh, uh, announce it very well how it will be done and 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 try to uh, uh, also have a have a you know present it very well within the game itself absolutely so some really huge things uh, up ahead in 2023 some big changes in cards some huge updates on the horizon um and our players will need to stay tuned for some more details and more information um about this but of course, throughout 2023 as well, we're planning on our, our regular um, balance updates, um, regular fixes and patches. Um. <clears throat> yeah, well, balancing updates, we might, you know, if we, uh, or when we start uh, facing out some cards uh, in, in the cycle of adding new cards, some older cards will go out, uh, we will probably uh, uh, also use the opportunity to, to face out cards that we are maybe not perfectly happy with or are not perfectly balanced or something like that. 
so we might rely less on, on balancing patches, for example. But more on that later. Absolutely. And so stay tuned for some more uh, specifics and more information uh, on what lies ahead in the next year for cards. Um, but I do believe that that pretty much sums up sort of the highlights uh, of what people can expect next year. Um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Gumme. It's been a pleasure to have you. Um, let's get back to the games and kick it back over to our studio team to see these next games in the Cards 2022 World Championship. We made it, everybody. We made it to the big game. It is the grand finals of the 2022 Cards World Championship. The title is on the line. 5,000 US dollars is on the line. We have Jaking, our reigning world champion, in one corner. We have Head looking to get ahead in the other corner. Nine. <laughs> that, that. Crystal, there are, there are way too many head puns. We had this like every 10 minutes, someone, <sighs> one more head pun and some heads are rolling. I mean it. <laughs> uh, darkness got funny all of a sudden. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and I, I appreciate you bringing an era of lightness to this event because I want to, before we get into the finals, give a shout out to all of the players because I think they've done a phenomenal job at being proper sportsmen as they got into this event. You know, we saw Bamboo getting eliminated yesterday. What you didn't see is Bamboo actually stuck around to help us translate the interview with Head. So, you know, talk about being just a wonderful person going, hey, I just got knocked out, but I'll, I'll stick around and help you guys out, no problem. Uh, and I think that kind of stuff is just amazing. We're about to see Jay King uh, taking on Head. Something really interesting there, um, and, and Mark Thea shared a quick note with me before we got into this segment. Um, Head had actually posted something on one of Jay King's uh, YouTube videos earlier this year about really liking Jay King's style and trying to emulate it, and one of his wishes was to compete with him. Uh, and I think he mentions an OCC and other events, but he definitely does not mention the opportunity to go up against him in the grand finals of the 2022 Cards World Championship. That is absolutely wild. So he's getting his wish, his wish, his wish. It's been a long two days. It's going to be an amazing game, an amazing series. And uh, Alien, I, I want to bring it to you because I think as the community manager, you know, you have to look at something like that and go, you know, this is an awesome community that exists in the world of cards right now. Absolutely, such an such an amazing community, and coming in here, um, you know, just a few months ago, and being able to get to know uh, all of these players, and and kind of you know this really warm and welcoming community. It's been incredible uh, coming in here, and I'm so appreciative uh, for everyone out there in the community. Uh, thank you all for being here and uh, and and uh, <laughs> being your awesome selves. Love it. Thank you so much, Darkness. All right, we got Head, we got J King. J King's been sitting back watching Head defeat his fellow Canadian, Berto Burrito. Head's coming in, maybe on a bit of a high, you know, just, just made his way back. Who's got the advantage in this next matchup? Uh, that, that, that's a very hard question. Of course, Head had some trouble with his nerves, not playing on focus all the time. J King, very, very experienced being able to deliver on point. On the other side, Head was able to defeat Birdo. And Birdo and J King, they are bringing basically the same archetypes. And so far, we, we think uh, Head is very well prepared with his lineup against the lineup from Birdo and, and J King. So I think deck wise, he, he has, uh, is a little bit better prepared. Of course, experience-wise and from, from the focus, from the nerves, being delivering on stage, J King is better prepared. And I'm very sure J King was following everything what Birdo did, his bands, his, his uh, play style, the cards he chose, the, the play style, the, the pass to victory. So maybe J King was able to, to analyze these matches and find out what, what he can do better than Birdo to, in order to defeat Head.
but I think even as underdog, Head has a very good chance to defeat J King here, and this battle will be incredible. I can't wait. Uh, just while we're waiting for the players to get set up, we're waiting for the casters to get settled in. We've got Ollie <laughs> and Spoos for this last uh, series for you. Um, Darkness, you mentioned bands, and I want to ask you a question about that, specifically because we've seen Soviet self-damage banned very often in this event, yet in the last series, we saw Head really take advantage of it and was able to defeat it three times uh, going on to, to the point we're at today. Do, do you think that that's something he's going to try and emulate against J King? He's going to look for that opportunity to find the Soviet self-damage deck, which is typically very powerful, um, but you know, run into some bumps, basically awkward draws and things like that, try and take advantage? Well, Oli mentioned before that Soviet self-damage is consider con considered as the strongest deck in tournaments right now. However, there are a lot of ways to counter it. This is why it's not strong on ladder, because you can, can face a ton of different decks. For example, Brit Air usually is really strong against it. German Italy Control is strong with all of those removals, especially if you know how to play against it. And even this Uprising decklist seems very strong, and at least stronger as the German US Frontline list against Soviet self-damage with the early war machine, the ramp opportunities, and just just a ton of stats and retreat and guards. So Head is definitely very, very well prepared and looking to find this opportunity and uh, maybe his entire lineup is prepared to beat the Soviet self-damage deck. So I'm very sure he won't ban it. And this means J King knows that uh, his Soviet self-damage deck is not getting banned, probably Brit Air, and this puts a little bit advantage onto J King in, in terms of bans, and con not having to consider four, all four decks, but three decks. So maybe he's banning something different, maybe he's not banning the Soviet self-damage deck like Birdo did, uh, and maybe German Italy control, maybe even the, uprise, uh, the, the Uprising, the Legion stack, going more towards that, changing, changing something from the strategy Birdo did. But at the end, who knows but what J King really thinks. We, we need to see that. And we're going to find out in just a few moments. I don't want to take too long. I want to get into <coughs> the action. So Eileen, one last question. What are, what are your thoughts before we get into the grand finals? Give me a prediction, give me uh, a thought, give me something. Wow, um, like <coughs> Darkness says, it's, you know, maybe head sticks are stronger um, against J King's lineup, but again, J King, the reigning world champion coming in here, he has the, the widest breadth uh, of knowledge and experience uh, at this level, in this, uh, in this tournament scene, so, I kind of want to say that it might end up being J King here taking it for the second year in a row, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and find out. Enough of us flapping our gums, Spoos, Ollie. Let's go with the finals: J King versus Head for the 2022 Cards World Championship. So much crystal darkness and alien and spoos. It, it is time. time. Yeah, absolutely. It is time for the finals of the cards 2022 World Championship, and it's a different looking finals than a lot of us thought. It is J King Seven versus Head. It is East versus West. It is time to figure out who will be the 2022 cards World Champion, and I could not be more excited. These two players are about to go head to head in a best out of five series. They're both bringing four decks. As everyone has seen, they will ban one. And for the first time, we have kind of like very different deck lists, right? Yeah, I mean, we had that earlier in, in yesterday's first match when Birdo was taking on Head. Because um, <laughs> Head has some, some interesting deck. The deck that he's bringing, like the German Italy control deck, that he's the only one who's bringing that, but also a US Legion deck, which he was kind of successful with. Um, I think and we should even yep. in even in the archetypes that they're bringing that are the same. I mean, yes, their Soviet self damage decks are kind of similar, but their Brit Air are pretty different. Yeah, they right? they have different approaches of, at Brit Japan Air even. But let's take a look at the bands first. So Head just got a Soviet self damage deck burn. J King just doing the same thing that Birdo did, right? Yeah, yeah. 
And Head just keeps spanning the, the Britney. So we just have the same bands as we saw in the previous match when Birdo was playing Head. So he Head just figured out, okay, this Brit Air list is probably the most frightening. I can definitely beat this self-damage deck. I don't need to get rid of this. He beat it three times and he's pretty confident in doing it another round. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, you know, we've been seeing we've been seeing the the self damage deck banned quite a bit, but now saying, hey, I, I feel confident against it. But there were also a few differences in the Soviet self damage decks uh, between J King and uh, Birdo. J King being the more you could say singularly focused deck that doesn't have as many cards that might end up as dead cards, and I think that can uh, help him avoid getting into the situation that Birdo got in in a couple of those games, which was not really having a whole, whole, st whole lot of stuff to play, having a lot of dead cards that he wasn't able to utilize in his yeah. hands. So it's going to be an interesting one. But let's go through these decks uh, uh, pretty quickly, and uh, let's highlight some of the differences uh, in, in, in what we're about to see here. Uh, and if we can get the first deck up on the screen, uh, that would be perfect. <coughs> um of course, we just went through these and we just uh, marked out the, the differences. I think so we, while, while the matches are going, we can just t name the main differences between the decks. But Yeah, I mean, there we go. So the US deck, of course, I mean, here's a huge difference, right? It's, it's a whole ally different, right? It's a whole archetype difference. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like this one is more aggressive. This is more frontline based, while um, Birdo is having more of a backline base with all these legions he's also sure he has shermans in it he wants to go to the front line but jaking with yeah just the standard u.s german list here with double blitzkrieg with the greyhound in it we already talked so much about it so i think we could just go quickly over these matches but yeah absolutely so i'm really excited to see to the players Jagro? in action uh, Jagro is a is a deck that Head is not bringing, right? Not bringing so Jagro. there's no there's no Jagro from Head, but this is a, now a unique one from J King, and this is kind of uh, generally thought to be a, a really good deck to bring because it has the chance to win against everything, and uh, I think we might be seeing J King bring this one first to just get the Jagro win out of the way, because it's good into pretty much everything. Soviet self damage. Now these players are both bringing this one. J King, however, banned Head's version of this, right? So Head's not going to have access to that. J King, however, will. The cool thing that we haven't seen played yet is the red banner combo onto the 34th, into the 272nd guards, into the Josef Stalin. Hope that we get to see that one. There we have the Brit Air deck uh, that's been banned out from J King, so not really relevant in this one. But it's clear that you know Head was was not liking the zeros and the adaptations from J King in that one. Yeah, although although he had good um, in the German elite deck, he had a good counter to this deck, but he still decides to ban this one over the Soviet one. And yeah, so far it worked out for him. Then we have for Head, we have the just the US. Poland Legion stack that we just talked about a few seconds ago. Um, then we have another Soviet self damage deck, but I think this yeah. one is banned, banned. right? So yep. we can just skip that one. Then we have the German Elite Control deck. Did not perform too well yesterday. Very good today. Um, can offer a lot of healing and a lot of control stuff in the deck. I think Head's going to bring this one first. Sure, I think yeah. it's good in, against every deck there from J-King that is left, and we might see this one first. And the final deck for Head here is just Britain, Japan Air, with, yeah, I think this is the more standard variant. J-King just brings some, some, he just cut Finest Hour, for example. Head just has this card in his deck. And also Naval Supply One is a really strong addition early on when you can find your one-drop airplanes and play a Naval Supply One. That can be a huge, huge impact on the game. Yeah, and with that, that's all the decks that we're about to see, and we're about to see these decks go head-to-head -head for the World Championship. Uh, for anybody wondering what's on the line, not only is it the title of Cards World Championship, the first place walks away with $5,000, second place walks away with $2,500, so it's double the prize money. It's $2,500 uh, purely riding on this series, and the players must be feeling the pressure. I mean, I think the, the money plays a role, sure, but... At least for Jaking, I know that the World Championship title is all yes. for him. He wants to have that title to prove last year was not just an exception. He wants to make clear, I am the best cards player in the world. And I think for Head, it's really a big honor to face Jaking in a, in a um, tournament environment, in a final. And now he's having the chance, even in the World Championship finals, to compete against Jaking and maybe beat his big role model. And that would really, really be a cool story. 
Yep, and he got his dream come true here. And J King Seven now taking on head. It is game number one in the finals of the Cards 2022 World Championship, and it is going to be the USA from the reigning world champion against Germany, Italy from head. And you've been correct. Head just brings German Italy first with a pretty okay starting hand. Found a sudden strike. Um, not really any follow up after that one. So he really needs to find the root out to get rid of all of these 30 seconds that might potentially come out oh. combined with two 35 T's in J King's hand. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Finding those two Panzer 35 T's there gives him great follow-ups for the next couple of turns. And, you know, he still has the option to go and dig out all those 30-second infantries. So this this is the fast start that J King wants against the, the German Italy deck here. Yeah, this is almost the perfect starting hand. Um, he found even found the PIR, so this can be dropped down later to make this 30 second even more frightening than they currently are. And yeah, 30 second in starting hand is always so important for US frontline. And he also found the Red Devils. Sudden strike, but suddenly there's another Panzer 35T on the f on the field. Uh, I, I'm wondering if he wants to go wide with a 30 seconds uh, or, or do a 30 second plus PIR now that the sudden strike has been burned. Because one thing that the US frontline deck can lack against this is the punching power to get through those big guards, right? The 4-7 in the 7th Alpine, the 3-6 in the Bologna Regiment. Now these are tough to crack sometimes, but it looks like J. King says, hey, I want to keep going for the early pressure uh, if I'm able to put on enough pressure I might just be able to slide in under before those guards get there Ooh, that is good decisive defense find here for our head he would have had otherwise he would have had no option this turn so yeah. that was a good one and yeah the, the problem for J King is now he's having a lot of units on the board already and in his hand is that that have two or less HP um, Red Devils is an exception. Also, the PRR is an exception. But it's it, a he plays would around it. Here. He plays around it. He does not trigger the decisive defense. He said, "I'm not going to give that for give you a below." We saw this for earlier free. for Birdo. So these these guys completely know how to play this and how to approach this. Although it is like he gave him a lot of Rudolph value now, but somehow he's just Turn completely five. confident. We can do it. Yeah, so, and had really unfortunate not finding the route out here. So this will be a really, really huge, we can do it. So J King just get rewarded for taking the risk here to run into the route out. And I'm pretty sure there's no other way we don't see a we can do it here. J King just went into calculator, was like, what are the odds of him drawing a route out <laughs> if he doesn't have it already? Uh, I don't like those odds, so I'm just going to go for it. And there we go. Um, Powerful board being established. And now we're starting to kind of veer into head needs to find a Leopold at some point because just trading what's on the field, off the field, is going to be extremely difficult for him and it's going to take a while. Meanwhile, J King will have the option to continue developing a board, get those uh, get those Hellcats, get those Shermans, get those half-tracks. All that stuff is, is what you don't want to see when you are playing Germany-Italy control into this deck. This is not a situation you want to be in. You want to have figured out how to deal with most of these units before before it gets to this point. Also, 4-6 PIR. That's going to keep buffing all the infantry units turn of turn. Yeah, and Head is in a very different spot, a difficult spot now. Like, whenever he needs one unit in the front line, there's a high risk of just eating a Blitzkrieg here, and he's already down to 14. He's not having Mar Nostrum in the hand. So there's a very high chance that J King can just kill him when he's having the, the Blitzkrieg in hand. And this is so tough to, to play this out, actually, because... You cannot just drop a guard and hope, oh, this is just stopping the aggression. Then yeah. there's just a half-track Blitzkrieg and you're dead. So there's a lot of things to take into, to, into consideration there for Head. And I think it's, it's he's in a really tough spot already. He's definitely in a really tough spot. And uh, how J. King will want to play this is going to be interesting as well. He, he decides to just stuff up the front line. And that's uh, exactly what I would have wanted him to uh, do here. Now, with the 5th Rangers coming in there as well, them being buffed, that makes them an excellent target to to get taken out. Um, but now, even if you drop the 7th Alpine Regiment, it can be traded out relatively easily because he's managed to establish a 4 attack, a 4 attack, a 6 attack, and not just a bunch of 2 attack units in the front line. So, 
it's a very critical spot here. If Head is not able to kill two units in a front line, he's dead next turn, since J King also has the Hellcat. Um, so he really needs to make sure, I'm not sure how he's ever doing this, to kill at least two units. Sure, he can trade the Flam Panzer into 35T, but this shouldn't be not, not enough. So he could go Plum Panzer, Panzer 3 into the fifth Ranger, maybe, but then he's only having three credits left. He can put up the decisive defense. Uh, he, he used Sudden Strike. Uh, no, um, uh, Hipper. <coughs> Hipper, yeah. But on what? And I think the Hipper is not enough here. He's just deciding to play it out like that. I would have loved to see him to kill the fifth rangers there. Because the problem with this play. Oh no, Jaking is not playing the medical battalion. That was Birdo, right? So there's not really a risk of this. Oh, that's it. That's 12. Like that's 12. It's de it's game. Jaking. What did I calculate there? It was actually 12. Even Yeah, he did not. He didn't kill the, the yeah, fifth he, rangers. He should have killed the fifth rangers. Yeah. Otherwise, it was lethal and. That was <laughs> really a fast win here for Jake. Jake pulls the trigger on that game. Look at his face. One. He's just so focused. He's just sipping his water. I want to be like Jake. I'm going to sip a water. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. do the Jake move. We are Jake now. Jake, congrats. <laughs> All right, but that's not it for Head. He's still in the match. It's just the first match that we just have of that's a potential also, five match series. That's also. Arguably the most difficult deck for him to play against. Yeah. Out of the lineup that 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 Jaking has. I mean, you have. Mm, uh, yeah, sure. Against the stuff that is still left for Jaking, this was probably the most aggressive and the most um, difficult archetype to play against. It should be easier against Brit Air, for example. Yes. Um. Yeah, but we're going to. It should to, be easier against. Br it should be easier against uh, Soviet self damage. You should feel relatively comfortable with with Britain, Italy there, right? No, with Italy, uh, Germany, Italy there, um, and the same thing about Jagro. Uh, he just needs to mulligan a little bit better. I'm not going to say better. I mean, he, he needs to mulligan differently and look for different cards in the starting hand because he really wants to stifle that early aggression. He needs to have find that Flampanzer for the Signal Regiment and, and he needs to get a, a kind of semi-early game Mar Marinostrum onto a Bologna Regiment. Then he's 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 good against Jackrow. Looks like he's going to pivot though. Brings the Brit Air deck and then gets faced with Jagro. and this is where I feel like this Maybe Head just made a tactical mistake because Jagger is one of those decks that can blow air out of the water, but... You can also go completely the other way. Exactly. So it's kind of a gamble. Depending on who's finding the Swordfish here, if Head is finding the Swordfish early, it can be hard for J-King to deal with this. And it looks like he actually found one. He also has a follow-up Albacore. He has the Monty. Yep. Pretty good start here. He also has the air superiority. It His only air superiority. He only plays one. It was kind of a good catch there. And Jaking, what is Jaking? Jaking needs. Jaking is going first. So he needs stuff like a 15th carry into Befehlswang. He's having none of these options. Not even having a, another 1k blitz unit in hand here. He found a signal regiment. That can make a big difference. He also found the Wilbewind, which yeah. is a pretty good guard against the Brit Air. But All unfortunately, right. he's not able to bring it to the front end this turn, but we definitely should expect it next turn. Yeah, but he's playing the Type 93, so he's going to be dealing two damage to that Swordfish. That's pretty uh, important, because this will mean that, that Head is almost forced to take the Swordfish and kill that Type 93. Then Jaking will have the Whirlwind into the, the front line, unless, unless Head decides, okay, I'm going to play the Albacore. But then you're leaving the Albacore open... You know, you're giving Jaking a, a zero credit trade on next on the next turn. So this has created a situation where on turn three, Jaking is likely going to get a Whirlwind into the front line, and that always sucks when you're playing Brit Air. Yeah, I wonder if Head is just using his air superiority to protect his Swordfish against the Type 94 attack if he's going for the Type 93 with the Swordfish. Um, Potentially, but on the other hand, you want to have the air superiority against a potential Whirlwind in front line. Yes. This Unit is exactly having three HP yeah, and it's way market. harder to get rid of than these two one HP units here. This is a very interesting play going for the Monty there, and I think I think it's it's the correct one because it it allows him to keep his air superiority, and it keeps the the uh, swordfish alive so that now the air superiority is going to be enough to take care of that. Yeah, and it gave him a draw. So it was for one credit. Yeah. It did a lot of stuff here. He just 
protected the swordfish, made the super air superiority really dealing three damage here, and drawing the card. Fantastic line of play there from Head. Really uh, wrapping his head around the situation and, and figuring out a good line. So many people would have been baited into just trading out and using air, superiori air superiority to, to take care of this, but Head... Ooh, Jaking forced to play a sender regiment on a swordfish. There was a 1-1, one, one, right? There was two damage on it. Surprise attack along with the albacore. Enough to take out the signal regiment. And Head now using the close air support as well to make a 2-3 bomber out of the albacore and take the Type 94 into a 2-2 with zero operating costs. Jaking doesn't is not protecting a super valuable unit under that Sendai, yeah. so he just does uh, a smart thing and uses it to trade. Yeah, and this is what, what 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 most newer players are just just doing. They're just too much relying on keeping that unit under the smoke screen and not utilizing utilizing as as an attack unit. Um, and J King did the direct opposite here. He just took the two attack, traded the unit away, pushed the unit to the front line, and is in an yeah. I mean. He, he needs to find a faint retreat soon to just stop the, the aggression from Head there. Like, Head has two convoys left, so he can just make his hand really, really big again whenever he wants to. He puts everything up into the front line, and uh, I believe that Jaking is definitely... He's running Blitzkrieg in this deck, surely. No, no, he's not. No, he's not. He's not in his Jagro. No, no, in a standard Jagro, you don't run yeah. stuff like Blitzkrieg. Um Although it would be pretty good, like with the Bicycle Regiment, there's a lot of synergy with the Blitzkrieg, but there are better cards to... Also, you yeah. want to have the least amount of orders for That's stuff true. like Aradu to yeah. have high chance to find your faint retreat, your bombing raid, and your desperate measures. And now, head forced to choose. And the highest potential damage unit in the front line is that Bicycle Regiment, because it only needs a Type 93 to deal 4 damage. So, head uh, thinking here, what can he do... And the most likely course of action will be that he takes out the Bicycle Regiment. But this still means six damage being delivered to face here for one credit by J-King. And with the Shinodo, with the Shinodo that's nine. That can put him down to seven. And that's a lot of pressure. And J-King knows that he can, he can still draw into the Feigned Retreat. He, he now has enough credits to rip it whenever his hand is, is low, whenever he draws into it. And it's even going to be difficult for Head to trade more than two units. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna trade two, and then he's gonna pin one. So only two damage potentially being delivered. To but face. We know that there is another Shinodo waiting, and then it's not just that that J King is relying on the on the feint with two Aradus in the deck, with desperate measures in the deck, with bombing raid. He's having like five six options that he can top deck here yeah. that give him whether the win or a very very good chance to close out the game later on. Exactly. So Head is not really able to kill all the units in the front line. Head really needs to find an Empire Strikes right now. If he found, if he, if that top deck, you know, uh, uh, he needs an Empire Strikes plus a Swordfish at least. <laughs> <laughs> that will allow him to wipe the board. But as you said, he's able to. Kill two, pin the Shinoto. Why would you? Why would you not go for the Sendai Regiment and give you another Swordfish? Because the other one has zero operation cost. Or? Yeah, yeah, but I mean that shouldn't matter that much when J King is sitting on eight credits. Yeah, and with two cards. With two hand. cards in hand, should not matter too much there. So maybe that was a slight misplay there by Head. Well, I think that definitely was a misplay. Now, Head is going to need to kill that Shinodo that's not pinned. Yeah, especially if this r Lightning would have been an Empire Strikes, right? Yes. He would have missed that one Swordfish, that one Bomber on board to yes. get rid of the Shinodos. So that was not just a slight misplay. I think it was a huge misplay. That's true. Now he's going to have to he's going to have to Lightning the Sentai back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's and then not he's gonna dead be in yet, but all... Jakey needs is probably one Aradu, and he has a 66% chance. Nah, oh, yeah, that. Or oh, Panzer 35T. Jakey 7 takes a 2-0 lead in the finals of the Cards 2022 World Championship. And Head, 
He knows it. He knows that it is. He is on his last life. But he was here against Berto. It's in the the same only situation. deck that was left for Berto was the Soviet self damage. He was here. He turned it around. He made the comeback. Can he do it again against arguably the best cards player in the world, the best cards player that has existed? I mean, it's just impressive how we just see the same thing happening that we just saw in the last match. And I'm pretty excited to see if Head can turn it around one more time or is, if J-King is just winning the Soviet self-damage deck for himself and making him the 2022 Cards World Champion. Well, I mean, it's up to Head to keep a cool head right now because he needs it. Going into this match number three, if he wants to turn this around, he can't get distracted. He can't get discouraged. He can't doubt himself. Yeah, like we like we just saw in the last match. It it every ma uh, detail matters. Yeah, like like one little mistake, not trading out the sender regiment, get you another bomber, can lose you a game in the end. Just imagine Empire strikes and then you push some units in the front line. You could still won, but not with this uh, with this missed trade there. Um, but here we go. This the is potential it. Potential final match for this year's World Championship. Both players just fought through a really, really impressive field of players. They're here in the finals, and it's... What? So he... He kept the hipper? I mean, it's... Going first? It's I'm not the worst option. Like, with the hipper, you can send the frontline unit back and make it cost six again. It's and, and also going first. I think going second, you would never keep it because then your opponent can push it up and you're one credit behind in that matter. So I think it's an okay argument here. Like you don't also don't want to draw things like sudden strikes, I guess, early on, although they're very good against the 456. So you could argue with it, but there are probably better options to find. I mean, out of the, all the cards in your deck, are there no better options than... Hipper and drawing King Tiger this early, that's just going to be a dead card for the next nine turns in his hand. It's not what <laughs> you want to find. More. It's not what you want to find. Uh, but, however, however, with that being said, Head does have the Flomp on, sir. Um, not that it's going to be great. I think maybe he should have just played it just to have a unit on board. Yeah. Uh, he can to trade out the SU, SU, right? Yeah. Uh, but he's got the JU88. That's always a... a, a hard card to, to play against. He's got two of them now. He's got the Jack Bomber. He's got now the Hipper. Then he's got the Annihilation. So, I mean, he has tools to work with in the coming turns. But look at what J-King has established on the board already. Yeah, looking at both players' hand, I'm pretty pessimistic here for Head. Like, the only good card in his hand that he can play by turn 5-6 is the Admiral Hipper that he just kept. The FW, okay, is another option. But yeah, look at the stats that J King is bringing on the board here. He will just eat five damage next turn. Potentially, whatever he's doing. Wait, did J King just? He did not attack with the SU. No, he just played a thirty fourth. I, I was wondering about that as well. Okay, so he's not deciding to put in early damage before the big guards unit units come out. He wants to have a really, really huge board, pushing four, five units with a lot of attack to the front line. And even if your opponent is dropping a guard then, you trade one of your units into it, you still have four units left and just kill your yes. opponent. I think that's the match plan for J-King. Yeah. Yeah, All I he mean, needs to be aware of that he's doing this before turn 10. Yes. Then there is a potential Leopold that can yes. just rip your whole plant. And he has no, uh, no counter-offensive. So it's not like he's setting up a counter-offensive. But if he does have all of these units in the front line, like it looks like he is doing, then... Uh, Yura right now would pretty much just end the game. So Yura would be nine additional damage, and uh, this is looking looking scary for Head now. Oh, Dashima, not really what you want to find here on turn six. Also won't help him against this strategy that Jaking is using, trying to play the front line more than the back line. Maybe learning a little bit from the mistakes uh, made earlier by Berto, who got kind of stuck in his own... On backline. Yeah, it wasn't really a mistake. I think at this point, Birdo had no other option. That's true, but, that's true. But yeah, usually this deck just pushes to the front line. So you need to just find the correct spot where you play Lola Dejima. And yeah, with it costing eight credits, it's never turn six. So it will be a dead card for another two turns. But maybe it can be valuable in two turns when we reach turn eight. It gives you a guard board with ambush. Not that the ambush is mattering a lot against 
all these big HP units from J King, but at least he cannot attack HQ. And look at this, J King Ura. just found the Ura. That's this fourteen is... damage. Wait, no, that's lethal. That's lethal. J King seven. What? In six turns, has oh, three out head to become the back-to-back -back cards world champion. That was not even close. Wow! What was that? He just top decked the Ura, I guess, and then with the Red Dawn, he buffed it. He finished it by just that one damage he needed. Ura plus that was an that was a crazy. Almost felt like that was a a, a multi turn setup for him. Yeah, you know, it, it really he's felt thinking like, like yeah. I'm playing this against uh, Italy, Ger uh, Germany, Italy, right? So I'm able I'm able to chill for a little bit because it's gonna take four or five turns for him to get ready. I'm just going to build everything up. Then I'm just in one fell swoop, going to take over the front line. Now, if I find the Yura, it doesn't matter what he does. The game's over. He found the Yura. He ended the game. He became the world champion back to back. I mean, Everybody that's doubted the legitimacy of his, his title last year, they can't yeah. doubt it anymore. Nope. He's won it without any other disruptions, without anyone not making it, and he just, just did it back to back. This person is insane when it comes to cards. He's qualified for every single OCC spoos, every single one. He he won even 11 when he's, out even of 12. Even when he's on vacation, right? He's been it's on crazy. two months vacation in Spain and he still did make He's playing from OCC. some library in Dublin, like, you know, hacking the Wi-Fi. That is this pure guy dedication. This guy has pure he dedication. He deserves it, yeah. Man, congratulations to J King 7 back-to-back -back cards world champion. Thank you for myself and Spooz. <laughs> we'll throw it back to Christo, Alien and Darkness. I cannot believe it. We have a 2022 Cards World Champion, and I almost said a new one, but we don't. We have our returning, reigning, defending World Champion doing it one more time. Congratulations, J King7. $5,000, the title of 2022 Cards World Champion. He could put that up right next to the 2021 title. That was amazing. That whole series lasted less than uh, maybe one of the games in the previous series. Amazing. Alien it is, can we just say that J-King is the best cards player ever and it's not even close? I mean, at this point, he's definitely shown his superiority. He is an incredibly strong player. Um, and as Ole pointed out, someone that we've consistently seen coming in again and again and again in OCCs. He's, he's comfortable playing from anywhere uh, and pulling out uh, wins no matter where he is. And I mean, just in, this, uh, in these three matches that we've seen, um, you know, the first match, he wins on turn seven. The last match, he wins on turn six. I mean, that is, that is amazing. And what incredible talent. Uh, as he's literally lost one match in the last two days. He's qualified for every OCC. He won the World Championship last year, despite the fact that Darkness, you gave him a bit of a harder path to get there. But what, what, what's your takeaway, Darkness, from this? I mean, you, you saw, you saw um, you know, Head manage to defeat Birdo. It was a hard-fought match. And you see J-King just show up and go, yeah, this is, this is my day today. Game over. I think Head had a very different approach playing against J Kings and playing against Birdo. Also, Birdo is considerable as good as J King in, in their training matches. They are almost even, like 50-50. They brought very, very similar decks, very similar archetypes. Uh, but it's, it's just, maybe just the name of J King, getting, getting into every single OCC, being like, the strongest player winning most tournaments, winning the most tournaments of all cards player, that puts you in a very difficult position as head uh, and just puts more pressure into it. We saw head struggling on first day against Berto Burrito, losing 3 0. But on the second day, he, he had his strategy. He came back. And he defeated Berto Burrito three times with his Comfort deck, three times against Soviet self-damage. And this time he, he was using the same strategy and losing, like against Berto, against the US deck, against Japan deck. Uh, Jaking was a little bit lucky that, that Head was not finding the necessary removal. For example, game one, US Germany, 
uh, US front line against German Italy, there, there wasn't the root, root out, there was not enough sudden strikes, the removal were missing and Jaking was perfectly playing around decisive defense. So that got Jaking in the back. The second one, Japan against air, again he did not find the board wipe, Empire Strike is so critical, Head did not got it and in the end, ah, I pointed it out, I shouted out loud when I saw he's keeping Admiral Hipper. Interesting decision, you could go for sun strikes instead for earlier removal, but when you go first, you really want to play Admiral Hipper turn five and sending back the SU to prevent damage or, or the big body, the 6-6, uh, the six, six, that would have annihilated the four credits Jaking just played, but he, he, I think he just lost focus in the third match and this allowed Jay King to find the 15 damage with the top deck Ewer, what was, he, Jay King was calculating that so fast, and yeah, congratulations to Jay King. Team Ammo Strikes back, <laughs> of course I'm really happy for Jay King, and I wish everything, every, uh, all luck to head. Second at the World Championship is still very, very good. Absolutely, and I think, you know, Darkness, that third game, <coughs> not playing Hipper at, at that point, but you could also see, you can see J. King's wheels turning as he's sitting there, and you said he calculated it really quickly. I'm pretty sure he was fully aware that, hey, if I top deck an Ura here, I red dawn myself, Ura, I win the game. And sure enough, that's what came off the top, knocked it out. Let's take a look at our final bracket for the 2022 Cards World Championship. I mean, it's been a heck of a two days. We've seen the three O's in that first bracket. We saw two incredibly hard fought matches in our, uh, essentially our semifinals here. J King 3-1 over Birdo, head 3-2 over Birdo. Um, but then just J King being absolutely too much here, uh, taking on head and defeating him three to zero. So we have, we have a returning world champion and that's pretty darn exciting. You know, Alien, as we're talking about the community and we're talking about players coming in and, and wanting to, to get there, you know, what, what, do you, what do you think, what do you recommend if you're talking to a brand new player and they're seeing like, hey, J King did this twice, how do I do this? Wow, that is, that is a huge question, Christo. <laughs> um, I mean, I think something that we're really lucky to have in this community is a bunch of people who are really helpful. Um, we have uh, some great content creators out there streaming, making videos. You can go out there, you can get a lot of information. For example, from uh, Darkness, who's uh, standing right here next to me, um, some really, really great, valuable information. And even if you come into the Cards Discord, if you're not sure what you're doing, you can, you can ask people to help you out with your decks, you know, given the options that you have, if you have a limited collection, you know, and people there are so, so helpful. Um, but of course, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of pra practice and a lot of dedication to make it to this kind of level of event absolutely and you know it, it's funny because we talk about these players you have J King and Birdo preparing together you have head who you know commented on one of J King's YouTube videos six months ago saying like hey I'm coming for you um, so you've got a lot of support from the community and you know we've got OCCs, we've got Opens, there's a lot of tournaments going on out there as well. A lot of opportunity to get involved in the tournament scene and have some epic, epic adventures like we saw over the last two days. It's been an absolutely amazing event. You know, Darkness, kind of what are your takeaways, I guess specifically from this last series, uh, but just in general about J King's performance. How do you, being somebody who knows him well, who has prepped with him a lot, how do you envision just his ability to do this well? Uh, I think the most outstanding uh, ability from J King is that he, he's getting over his limitations, over his borders. There are tons of players who are uh, dedicated to one single deck or to one single archetype or one single strategy. So for example, people only playing aggro, people only playing J aggro, uh, only playing uh, resistance or control decks and it's when, when you were successful with, with one single deck and your brain tells you this is the way uh, it's very hard to to see everything and Jay King is able to do that he's able to to see all of the potential decks all of the in, involving matters out there and adapt to that 
not limiting his self to, to, to things, to borders, but uh, going deep down into cards, like in, into a big sea and in, in, into the ocean of cards, cards <laughs> and finding the best decks, the strongest decks, no matter what. Absolutely, right on darkness. And now to hear it from the man himself, we have Ollie, who is mic'd up with our 2022 <coughs> Cards World Champion. Jaking, congratulations, back-to-back uh, -back world champion. A huge smile on your face, proving all the doubters wrong. Tell me, what are you feeling right now? Um, I, I'm feeling quite a lot of things um just i think i'm still in shock i don't think it's really like set in yet um like i said throughout this entire tournament i've just had like a sense of calm over myself the entire time i haven't been that nervous and i think a part of that is that i just came to terms with whatever the results of this tournament are so I, i'm still sort of processing the fact that i've actually won it <laughs> Yeah, well, it didn't just win it. it what a dominant uh, performance in the finals. Three games, uh, a, a quick 3-0. Uh, did the finals play out the way you expected them or, or way above plan? Um, I, I think it's safe to say that that went far better than according to plan. Um, I mean, I brought the decks in the order I wanted to bring them in. Um, I sort of got some of the matchups that I wanted to get, I suppose. But, I mean, you never expect you're going to 3-0, especially when you're against such a good opponent and uh, you have so many similar decks. Nah, it's exactly. Um, I mean, I want to talk to you kind of quickly about, about one thing. So, I mean, I, I normally have a, a, a paper full of notes here, but I didn't really get time to write a lot down. That was such a fast series. Uh, but I, in game number three, you know, you go into the Soviet self-damage deck, and it was the Soviet self-damage deck that caused problems from Birdo in the lower bracket. That was the deck that, that Head was able to beat three times. So when you go into that match, were you feeling nervous about that matchup at all, or, or did you feel like, you know, I'm 2-0 up, I'm going to finish this right here, right now, regardless of what deck he brings? I mean, I think... Um, my Soviet self-damage against his German Italy is probably the worst matchup that I had for Soviet self-damage. Um, obviously, I definitely had it in mind that Birdo was in the exact same position as me and unfortunately went on to lose three in a row. Um, but I knew just statistically speaking, I was not going to lose three in a row. So once I got into game three, I didn't necessarily think I was going to win that game in particular. Um, but by that point, I was pretty confident I was going to win as long as I kept my head and kept playing well. All right, then the way you played it, uh, you played the SU early and then you had the chance to play a 34th guards alongside it or move it up and even keep it guarded in the front line with the 456 and deal five damage to face. Why did you hold it back and choose to develop in that situation? That's a that's a, a question that we were asking ourselves in the caster booth, and it ended up winning the game once that Ura came off the top. But what was your thought process behind there? So the idea was the longer the game goes on, the more likely German Italy is going to be to win. Um, their discard's going to start coming in, their draw denial's going to start coming in. Once they get 10 credits, Leopold is a constant threat to completely turn the game around. And... I was looking at the cards in his deck, and there's not a ton of cheap removal. German Italy lacks tempo, so I saw, like, worst case scenario, if he has um, Sudden Strike and a 989 or Sudden Strike and just sack in the, uh, the JU, he could remove two units, and that still means I keep a third unit in the front line, and he's low on health. Um, and then I can drop another 6-6. Six, six. Or he could lie in for a day, but if he lie in for a day, he leaves two units on the board, and then Ura is top, top deck Ura is lethal. Uh, I was also trying to sort of threaten that I might have Ura in hand. Um, and I didn't, but thankfully I top decked it, and it all worked out according to plan. And I had to quadruple check that the red dawn there was enough. Because, um, yeah, I, I honestly didn't believe it at first. <laughs> 
Well, it was an absolutely uh, amazing display of skill, not just this series, but this entire tournament. Uh, very different path you took through the, through the bracket this year than uh, last year, uh, going undefeated, only losing one game uh, through the entire tournament. Uh, did you perform above your expectations in this tournament? Certainly. Um, I mean, just in terms of purely based on results, uh, I went 9-1 and one in top four this year. I went 11-8 and eight last year. Um, so that that's a hugely different win ratio. That's a 90% win ratio, but obviously that's 10 game sample size. I mean, I, I think I played well and I was expecting to play well and I was planning on playing well. But even in the 2021 World Championship, where I think I did play quite well, it was still one or two mistakes. Um, I think this is the first tournament that I can think of where at this moment it does not feel like I've made any mistakes. Um, maybe I'll go back and check and I see something so that good. I disagree with. Uh, maybe I maybe I made a mistake. I'm completely it, missing it. Everyone in Twitch chat <laughs> is blaming me right now. And there was certainly some plays I went for that didn't pan out. Um, yeah. But I don't think I would have played anything differently just going off the top of my head. Um, and yeah, from my perspective, this was sort of my perfect tournament. Um, greatly aided by luck of the draw. Um, I'm not going to deny that, but yeah, it felt really good. All right, now uh, a little bit about your wardrobe choice. Uh, that, that pineapple shirt you're wearing is, is one we see a lot. Is this your lucky shirt? Yeah, I do consider it my lucky shirt. Um, I think if you go back to the very first OCC I ever won, um, October 2020, I believe, uh, I was wearing this shirt. It definitely was for the November 2020 OCC, which was the second one. Um, actually, underneath, I'm wearing my Team Ammo shirt, uh, courtesy of Darkness. <laughs> so, yeah, I got fully kitted out for this, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I was certainly lucky today. I don't know if it's the Pineapple shirt, the Ammo shirt, um... But I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, whatever shirt uh, stores are selling pineapple shirts, they're sure to run out <laughs> after uh, this performance. Everybody's going to be trying to become a world champion by wearing their pineapple shirt. Uh, any last wor words before we wrap this interview up, uh, Jaking? Any shout outs that you want to give? Um, I mean, I definitely think Bodo deserves a shout out. Unfortunately, he did end third, but he just as easily could have won this world tournament if some just some things were different. Um, and all of my competitors had as well in second place. I mean, 3-0 does not tell the whole story. I don't think, um, like, I know people thought I was, uh, like, the favorite going into that matchup. Um, but, I mean, 3-0 is not what Head deserved. Uh, I think he played very well from what I saw. And, uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel and a Discord channel. Uh, if you like me and want to learn how to become world champion, follow me there. Um, <laughs> double yeah. world champion. If you want to be learn how to become a double world champion, J King, congratulations once again. A feat that is not going to be easily replicatable in cards history, however long that may be. Enjoy the win. Uh, you know, spend an evening soaking it in, letting it settle in, and enjoy, J King. Congratulations, and we'll send it back to Crystal. Thank you very much. You heard it here first, friends. Follow J King on YouTube, Discord, and Twitch. Buy yourself a pineapple shirt, and you are guaranteed to be a double world champion or your money back. <laughs> uh, but on, honestly, looking at the smile on his face, you cannot, uh, you can't look past that. He is just somebody who is so wholesome, you know, talking about how, hey, I beat Head, he deserved better. Hey, Birdo's really been, been killing it. Um, so, you know, somebody who's really given a shout out to Team Ammo and all the people who support him and get him to where he is. And I absolutely love that about him. There is something to be said for somebody who is a very gracious winner. And not once, but twice, our double, our back-to-back -back world champion, $5,000, the title of 2022 Cards World Champion. Congratulations again, J. King. It's been quite the experience. It's been a heck of a, a two days, and I, I like... I'm almost sad it's over now, but I think it is time to start to, to wrap this whole event up. You know, Darkness, why don't we start with you? Any final thoughts as we kind of end this two-day journey together? It was a blast. It was an amazing series. Very, very intense games and very intense storylines. Like Bamboo talking himself like a casual player who accidentally ended up here. 
had who really wanted to face Jay King and compete against him, Birdo Burrito, his friend, his buddy, to, to get out of his shadow and prove himself a story and Jay King trying to defend his title. Overall, it was a very nice storyline to follow and I think we really produced Kart's history today. What is an amazing, an amazing feature of Kart's, of an online game, this eSport aspect and I can't wait for next year to, to start a an, an new season, a new year of Kart's eSports. Now, Darkness, I asked you this question at the beginning of the broadcast. I kind of want to ask you it again now. I asked you the difference between coming to Iceland and playing in the World Championship versus coming this year and casting. Does watching this, watching your teammate J King win make you go, you know what, next year I might want to play again? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely have this feeling in my heart and I really want to to come here again, to be in Iceland here again and be part of this. And maybe I will, I maybe I stuck again a toe into the tournaments, but of course I choose uh, three years ago, the, the path of supporting cards by, by starting to stream, starting to share my secrets, starting to educate, starting to, to produce cards content and be more on the production side. Although my heart is beating to, to be a player and I, I have mixed feelings, but overall I'm, I'm very happy my friend Jay King made it today and got the world championship title. And I'm, I'm part of this awesome crew uh, making, making this content and this cards tournaments and esports possible for everyone. So it's, I don't know, I'm a little bit overwhelmed and it was just two awesome days. And hopefully I, I will come back as a player at some points, but I, I do enjoy casting also very much. Well, I mean, I think you know, you, you covered so many things there and I can tell you're a bit like choked up about it, but um, you know, if you're gonna follow Jay King to learn how to be a, a world champion, I highly recommend following Darkness and hanging out with him on Twitch and following all his content. Another great person to, you know, learn from and just, just watching these matches physically next to him instead of doing it over, uh, you know, webcam and all that was a le great learning experience for me. So I, I really appreciated the time uh, we spent together this weekend. I do have one more question for you, then I'll, I'll stop bothering you about, you know, th this whole teammate thing being being the world champion. But, you know, what, when, when we shut the cameras off, do you go back and shoot him a message and say, hey man, congratulations? Like, what does what that first message to Jay King look like? I, I will definitely send him a mes message congratulating him uh, because Jaking is a really co cool dude and I enjoy being his friend. I even met him in Spain and his girlfriend last summer. We were together on vacation. So yes, we, we are good. <laughs> we are good. You know, there, there's something to be said for not only the fact that you can be teammates and you can compete together and you can prepare together, but also the fact that you've ended up developing, um, you know, friendships through this game. Um, you talked about meeting him. I know, um, you know, your girlfriend also like has spent time with with him and his girlfriend and they even know uh, Birdo and all that. So just so cool hearing that, hey, we're. We're, we started gaming together, but now we're actually meeting up regularly at different places around the world. So it's, it's just so amazing to hear that. And I think that goes again into, you know, just highlighting how amazing a community Cards has right now. All right, Alien, we're, we're, we're getting to that time to wrap it up. What, what has been your highlight of the weekend? And, and give me any final thoughts you may have. Wow, I mean, it's been quite the weekend. It's been amazing to be able to be a part of this huge production, I think. Man, we've had some amazing games uh, and huge congratulations yet again, of course, to Jay King and all of our players uh, that we've seen here over this weekend. Every single one of them really deserves to be here and has earned their spot here um, and, and, and our admiration for sure. Um, just thinking back and, 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 
and how, you know, it's such a huge production setting something like this up. Uh, and of course, you need a lot of people alongside with you to make it all happen. So I want to make sure that I thank and give a huge shout out to uh, Scouscott, the studio that we are currently shooting in, to 983 Media for helping us produce all of this, to all of our casters um, that we have here, to Darkness, to Spooz, who's upstairs somewhere, Christo, our host, and of course, Ole, who's with us as well. Um, the whole 1939 team. Um, this is, you know, this this takes a lot of manpower to put together. Um, and of course, to our players, to the, both the top four, to every player who participated uh, at some stage in the World Championship, who participated by watching uh, some of these streams that we've had for following along with the, with the process. Um, we have such an amazing community that I am so grateful uh, to be able to be a part of now. Um, and what an amazing weekend! What 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 an amazing way to kind of wrap this sort of uh, this year uh, of of competitive uh, cards esports up. Absolutely, no better way of putting a bow on it than crowning our world champion. Not quite over yet, though. We do have. I, I think this might be my favorite OCC of the year. Is the one in December that we've got coming up in a couple of weeks because. You just kind of get to let loose and have some fun. So we're going to have an OCC in a couple weeks, so you do not want to miss that. Um, Aileen, I'm, I'm happy you thanked um, the, the crew here helping us produce this because I uh, would like to apologize that I feel like I've butchered every Icelandic name, Icelandic name I've tried to pronounce, <laughs> including yours. I've probably said it in like five different ways. But um, yeah, it looks like a beautiful production. Everything looks amazing, but you don't see all of the people running around behind the scenes. The scale scooter guys who are pressing buttons, running around, testing our microphones. You got Julia from 1939 who's taking pictures behind the scenes and grabbing food for us in between. Uh, you got Mark Theus who made the trip so he can go and make sure everything looks exactly the way that you are used to seeing it when it comes to cards. Amazing players, amazing casters, Oli doing his last World Championship broadcast. It has been such an epic, absolutely amazing weekend. Uh, everybody should give themselves a good clap on the hand for just doing such an amazing job here. It's been such a wonderful experience for myself as well. We are going to leave you with a little highlight of uh, the past two days, so a, a little clip video for you just to, to get the memories going already, even though we've barely left where we are at. But uh, from the 93 Media team, from the 1939 team, um, like just congratulations to Jaking, to all the rest of the players who made it here, to all the players who make this community so, so awesome. You can do it. You can be at the World Championship. Start now, and we'll see you next year. Welcome everybody, it is finally time. We are here, it is the 2022 Cards World Championship. We are getting into the first game of this series. That's it for Berto Burrito. Wow! He's starting strong. We saw Berto Burrito win his first matchup 3-0 overhead. J King 7. The reigning, defending world champion takes on Bamboo. Making seven, three O's Bamboo and secures himself the second spot in the upper bracket finals. Play around that and that's it. Oh, that's knows, it for it. Bamboo. Wow. J King 7 versus Head. It is East versus West. It is time to figure out who will be the 2022 Cards World Champion. Wait, no, it's Lethal. It's Lethal. It's lethal with J King 7. What? In six turns has 3 0 Head to become the back to back Cards World Champion. No.